So already we are introducing the team and we had a brief introduction of the content also. So let me say that this whole workshop essentially is a process of self-exploration. I'm just going to raise certain issues which are very basic to our life, our individual life, our family life, our role in this organization, our role in the society. I'm going to raise such basic issues and my task will be very simple. Right? So place, to place those issues and then we we'll start exploring together. So it is not a monologue, it is a dialogue. I'll say certain things from my side and I'll invite questions and suggestions from your side and then we'll explore together. Let us see what comes to us naturally, isn't it? There is an innate faculty in each one of us which is called as natural acceptance. And as we go along, we see that it is always innate in me, in each one of us, only that we are not paying attention to it. Once we start paying attention to this innate faculty in each one of us, the natural acceptance, we start getting very genuine answers. And when we get answers from there, it will resolve. Otherwise, we are in contradictions, in dilemmas, caught up in multiple opinions, versions of philosophies, all those things. But once we start referring to our natural acceptance, we get very genuine answer. So this whole process is to be aware of my own natural acceptance and then to live accordingly. Isn't it? So we are going to enter into that process itself. And let me also mention that for conducting these workshops, we do not take any remuneration or anything. It is just offered as a gift to the society. So, to begin with, we all are in education. So, I am going to talk about education, what education is essentially. And what is the role of education in holistic development of an individual, of society. So, in every institution we have a vision, isn't it? We have some mission, then we set up some goals. So, do we have the right vision for education? What would be the vision for education? Isn't it? So, in due course of time, we are also getting aware of basic human aspiration and fulfillment. So, we appreciate that AICT has taken this initial but very significant step to fill this crucial missing link. I hope the voice is audible. There is some buzzing sound. Huh? Is that my voice is clear? So we need to enable an education sanskar process which can be termed as domain, isn't it? So if you see in the past 50 or 60 years, literacy has become so common. Now every child, almost every child is going to this school and every child is getting the opportunity to get educated. So it's our responsibility now to set the process which can be termed as domain. Through a human education sanskar process, we are able to develop a human worldview, a human perspective. So for example, when the child comes to the school, the child has so many questions regarding oneself, one's family, one's career, one's job, one's future family, isn't it? So can we develop this kind of worldview or perspective in the child through education? Then only the child is able to contemplate on values. And what value is essentially? If you look at it, value is participation in the larger order. For example, if you look at this pointer, it is something in the nature. It is playing its role in the larger order. It is helping me conduct the workshop. This mic is participating in the larger order. This board, this projector, this computer is participating in the larger order. Similarly, we are also there as a part of this nature, as a part of society, as a part of family. Isn't it? My role, my participation in the larger order is my role. Thoughts are enough to keep me unhappy. Or my thoughts are there to keep me happy. So we have to look into our role, right from individual to the entire existence. You know? What is our role? So that means I need to contemplate upon human values. I need to contemplate upon my participation. When I am able to contemplate upon these, then only I am going to pick the right kind of a skill which enables me to live with human contact. Now, if you see, the education today has become largely skill biased. 
more and more sophistication, more and more automation, isn't it? And there is so much to learn in terms of skills these days within the classroom, outside the classroom. Earlier, if you look at the hours of study, that was quite limited. Now the students have to study in the classroom, they have to go for internship, work on projects, even they have to attend MOOC courses, right? <laughs> so much of impartment of skills is there. But maybe we are missing out the basic aspiration of the child. What is that basic aspiration that we have to point out, that we have to make out? So we have to learn skills, but the skills have to be guided by certain things. If you look at the wars, they have become much more devastating. If you look at the crimes, they have become much more perilous. Why is that happening? Are we developing skills merely for developing skills and technologies or there is some purpose behind that? If we keep on developing more and more skills, more and more technology, more and more automation, isn't it? The wars are going to be much more destructive. So are we really moving in the right direction? Have we picked the right kind of skill? Are we going to develop technology only to capture the market, to be the global leader? Or there would be some purpose behind that which can enable human conduct? And who is responsible for that? If our own children are into such developing such technologies which can be destructive to the society, to the humanity, then who is responsible? It's not that we are not responsible. We are enabling that kind of skill without certain things which was more basic. Then only we can have a vision for human society, a human order, a human culture, a human civilization. So we have to see that we are playing a serious role here in this whole process. If you are just into this, developing a skill, forgetting about all this, then we are also responsible. Now when we are going to talk about certain things like this, then there has to be certain basic guidance. Yes. Any reflection upon what I said right now? Any comment, any feedback from you? Is that making sense? Can we limit ourselves to only develop some skills? Is that so? So we can't restrict ourselves to only developing some skills. In fact, if you look at the NAC criteria, if you look at the graduate attributes, the program outcomes, that also does not talk only about the skills. If you look at the NAC criterion 3, it talks about uh, research, at the same time it talks about extension. That you cannot be limited in one part of the corner of the room and just keep on conducting some research. You have to extend it to the society also. So people are serious about it, people are thinking about it, isn't it? Only that we have to be a little more uh, aware of what we really want to be. So when you go to develop any kind of educational content, then there has to be some basic guidelines. So for example, it has to be universal. Universal means applicable to every human being, irrespective of caste, creed, gender, region, sex, nation, whatever. If it is not universal and you try to live by those values, okay, then the values will be contradicting. My value would be contradicting your value. Most of us are saying that we are living a value-based life, but ultimately we are not in harmony. So it has to be universal. Is that true? Can there be some value which is not universal? For example? Yeah, this is all universal. Everybody wants peace. Everyone, everybody wants to be happy. So, while we are going ahead, we can keep on reflecting on these basic guidelines, whether whatever I am saying from this side goes by those guidelines or not. It has to be universal. It can't be the case that values are of one kind for male and of another kind for female, for one kind of uh, class of society and not for the other class of society. No has to be universal. Then only it can continue. Second thing, it has to be rational. It has to be applicable to logic. It has to be logical. It has to be conducive to our reasoning. We can reason out. It cannot be a set of sermons, moral stories, or some dictums, or a set of do's and don'ts, or should and shouldn't. That will not help. If it doesn't help us, 
how can it help the children? So in fact, when we conduct any course on human values, we encourage the children to ask questions, as many questions as possible. When, the, when we are able to reason out at a rational level and we feel satisfied, then only you go further to verify it, whether it is verifiable. Does it appeal to my national acceptance or not? Is it something which is acceptable to me naturally within or something different from that? And at the same time, can I validate it in my living? If I live accordingly, and I, do I feel fulfilled? Essentially, why we are doing all this? Because we want to have a happy and fulfilling life. So can I be able to fulfill my relationship living by this way? Can I fulfill my interaction with the rest of nature? Does it ensure health in my body? Does it ensure harmony in my family? So it has to be valid also in my living. And finally it has to lead to harmony in every level. It cannot be the case that it is ensuring harmony at a personal level but from creating disharmony at the institutional level. It has to lead to harmony at every level of my living. Is that fine? So these are certain guidelines and when we are able to deliver the content and we are able to enable the understanding in the child with this kind of content, then the skill education is value guided, otherwise it is unguided. And this only we can be able to ensure an equitable and just society, which is the coveted state if you look at the uh, new education policy. So ultimately, and this is something that we have been talking about in the whole uh, human history. Ultimately, we want to have an equitable in the society. There are so many revolutions, so many uprisings in the society, merely because we want a just society, an equitable society. So this is the vision with which we are having this workshop. And let me also congratulate uh, our SRM team because this is the first management development program that we are having. So, it's a very good thing because I was counting heads and I could see that we are more than 80 people in this hall sitting together to understand and to go about it. So, in this session we are going to talk about basic human aspiration and then the program to fulfill the basic human aspiration. And when we are able to understand our aspiration and our program, then we are also able to understand what essential development means. If I want my nation to develop, if I want my you know, child to develop, if I want my family to develop, my region to develop, my state to develop, ultimately what is that development which can be wasted? And this is also give an idea about the whole content and the process and the expected achievement from this workshop. So I will say that this is a proposal. It's a proposal. It means you do not have to start by assuming it as true or false. I think we can keep our mobiles at rest. So both of us, <laughs> you can switch off the mobile or you can keep it silent and keep it inverted. Otherwise it flashes whenever a call comes and then it draws your attention. You can keep it inverted. So it is a proposal and we can verify it on our own right. So do not start by assuming it as true or false. It may be the case that whatever I am saying matches your own thoughts, so you may agree to me. It may not match your thoughts, so you may not agree to me. But that is not the purpose of agreeing or disagreeing to any proposal. The purpose is to verify it. And there is something called natural acceptance which I was mentioning. If I try to verify it on this basis, I get very genuine answer. For example, if I ask you, what is naturally acceptable to you? Feeling of relationship or feeling of position? What do you say? Just verify it. Right? With one, with many or with everyone. See? With everyone. Sometimes or all the time? All the time. If you look at it, you just start paying attention and we get a hint that yes, I want to have a feeling of relationship with one and all every moment. But when you look at your living, it may not be the case. It 
may not be case even in the family. Sometimes I might have to give opposition for my spouse, for my child. But if you ask yourself this particular person with whom I am living in a family, do I naturally accept to have the feeling of relationship or opposition? If you are able to see this very clearly, why do you work for opposition at all? If you are not able to see this clearly, then I may think of so many things in the feeling of opposition. But if I get this thing clear at the very outset, that ultimately I want to have the feeling of relationship, isn't it? Not opposition. If this part is clear to me, the rest becomes clear. But if I am not clear about this, then I start looking at the reaction of the other, the behavior of the other, you know, the incidences that are taking place. And then we may be embroiled in our thoughts for the whole day, for the whole week, thinking about opposition. The same thing we apply to our department, our colleagues. We may get into opposition sometimes, isn't it? And then we may feel very disturbed, perturbed, opposed. And you may try to sort it out for years together, it does not get sorted out. But if you ask yourself this very basic question, if this person, do I naturally accept your relationship or opposition? And if you are able to see, then essentially you aspire for relationship, not opposition. Then your whole thought process gets transformed. Then I have to get to dialogue with the other. If I want to have a relationship with you, I'll get to dialogue. I'll not just uh, avoid you and talk to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do say that if somebody has to get married, first of all, both the parties should be attending the workshop together. You know? <laughs> get prepared for that. They have a problem. They can come into the course so that they can get some value or something. It's all there. Yeah, that is also there. In fact, we could see many examples. There are many couples who do share that earlier there was so much to trouble in their marriage and now that they have gone through this whole process they are living together and they are also sending message to the society that please you know, if you uh, pay attention to this particular thing then your life is going to be happier so no need to assume it to be true or false but rather to verify so it is a proper dialogue a dialogue that starts with me and you. But gradually, you will see that it takes the shape of dialogue in your own self. Yeah. It takes the shape of dialogue in your own self. And there are two realities which are associated with each one of us. One is what I am. What I am means my own thought process, my assumptions, my attitude, my behavior, my conduct, okay, my notions, my belief systems my aspirations, my concerns, all those things put together is what I am. And there is another reality, what I really want. And the two may not be the same. The two may be far apart. What I am and what I really want to be may not be the same. And you see that our whole problems in life is basically to do with this gap, the whole set of problems. You know. The more I am different from what I really want to be, I am in problems. If I am the way I really want to be, I am resolved. You can take a mic. What you are and what you want to be, there might be a gap. There is no gap. There is no chance of education or learning things. Today I am in a class, right? Today I think that it's not what to be. It's okay. Then, it, then others will also listen. Gap between what you are and what you want to be. 
Yeah. If there is no yeah. If there is no dependency, I agree with you that you cannot aspire something what you want to be if you don't have the basic facts in your basic habits. But generally speaking, in any learning environment that we continuously learn every day, every day, every minute I learn. And for example, I think that I don't have the strong human values right now. So that's why I want to make the class. Hopefully I learned something from this class which will be useful. So what I am and what I want to be is different. That's why I'm in this class. So it has to be like this. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't serve the purpose really very well as to the real you know, learning, going to school, good living, there's, there's no value there at that, that case. You know, you have to be just in a place, just sitting and eating and, and flying down all the way. That's yeah, not really a very great thing. So, that's why you are here, one thing. But why you are here? Ultimately, to remove this gap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, that is is given. That is already there. I am not the way, the way I really want to be. But if I am working on myself, it is essentially to be the same way as I really want to be. That is my natural acceptance. So, that is there. We are in a state which may not be acceptable to us naturally all the time. And then from here we have to transform, we have to progress. Isn't it? So, this part is already there, what I am. And I have to be aware of what I really want to be. In fact, the more I become aware of what I really want to be, my awareness about what I am also becomes clearer. Because I may be assuming at this point of time that I am okay, for example. But if I become aware of what I really want to be, that is my natural sentence, I start becoming more and more aware of underlying assumptions, underlying beliefs which may not be coherent with my natural sentence. So in this process, you become aware of this part, you also become aware of this part. And then you grow as a human being. Is that fine? Any other question? Any question from the back side? Is it okay? Okay, thank you. So we are into talent now. <laughs> and if you look at this, the talent is in yourself. If you ask yourself, with whom do I talk most of the time? With whom do you talk most of the time? Yourself, isn't it? You keep on talking during sleep also. <laughs> now that only the basic issues have to transform. So the purpose of this workshop is to strengthen them or initiate this internal dialogue. And that's why we say that this workshop is starts but does not end. Because once this dialogue has started within you, it continues. So let me ask a few relevant questions. Okay. Like one question is, that I have to ask for myself, okay. do I want to be happy? Yes? Do I want to be prosperous? Yeah, so that is fine. I am happy all the time. 
and still also if we see that most of the time, then try to count all those moments when you want to become unhappy. So you keep a diary whenever you want to become unhappy, note it down. <laughs> So with that, what do we say? Then I want to be happy all the time, but it is not possible. And then I try to compromise that just with a given state. But if you look at, you, at your natural acceptance, then you can see that ultimately you want to be happy all the time. And happiness doesn't mean that you are laughing all the time. What happiness means is come to see. But within yourself... See, happy mind only can be prosperous. Yeah, that will also... Uh, come to you. Yeah. So, sir is saying happiness is internal, it manifests externally. Yeah. Any other thing? Why are people Sir, if you accept things as it is, there is no question of you being unhappy for the matter of anybody. See, you and I can't change something. Let us, let us uh, better accept it. Then there is no question of me being unhappy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Exactly. There is no expectation. There is no question of unhappiness. Unless that expectation is there, you are being uh, to feel that, that expectation is not met. So you become. I think we can take up my so that others can also listen. Is it a right expectation or wrong expectation? I very recently uh, saw, watched a WhatsApp uh, video <laughs> where animals don't expect the, their kids to take care of them during their old age. Only human beings expect that. See, that's because you are a citizen. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's so fine. But now, just again ask yourself. Is it naturally acceptable to us? Yeah, nothing. Nothing is there. Animals, they don't have anything. They don't pamper the kids. They don't worry about the kids. Again, ask yourself, is it naturally acceptable to us to be like an animal? Yeah, yeah. We are a social animal. As you said, we have a sixth <laughs> sense. So, because of the sixth sense only, all these things come. If there is no sixth sense, then we all will be happy. See, if you throw food to the animal, the animal is comfortable. It can eat. But if I am given food to eat by throwing at myself, is it acceptable to me naturally? No. So, 
we again have to look into all these issues. So the good thing is that so many issues are coming up. Gradually, as you go along, this will all get responded to. Uh -huh. The sixth term is not meant for a social because most of these are social. <laughs> you go back to monkeys and tigers. They are social animals. But the question what I have is, the sixth sense is used only to find the difference between what the right and wrong. We are the only creature in the whole wide world who can make a difference between what is right and wrong. That is why we are, we are learning the universal values otherwise. <laughs> so you can't teach the universal values to the, to, the, to the animals over there. So this is the only reason. We cannot why we conduct are. a class like this, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> But we have the potential to understand. We have the you know, natural acceptance to Hello. live the right way, to have the right understanding. That's why we are working so much. It's only the humankind which is going through the process of education. If you look at our whole life, we spend one-fourth to one-third of our life getting educated. Why is that so? So that is the basic difference between animal and a human being. Sir, uh, the happiness is a state of mind. Uh, for example, I would say, uh, yeah, a match, cricket match between India and Pakistan, the result is one. One is going to win, but that one result produces on one side happiness because they are going to win and the other side it produces unhappiness. The same result, see only one result we are getting but it produces uh, two uh, uh, things there at the same place. Uh, so I would say it is only a state of mind because if I win I am happy, uh, if I am not winning I am unhappy. So that, that is one thing there and I, another thing I want to say uh, you celebrate. We celebrate Deepavali, we celebrate birthday, we celebrate uh, occasions like that. So on that day, all of us uh, greet, greet each, uh, happy birthday, happy Deepavali, or whatever may be. We say happiness on only on particular day. But why not celebrate uh, every day Deepavali, or every day birthday, <laughs> or every day it is um, a wedding day, or something like that. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so naturally, every day will become happiness, sir. Happy day. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. thank you, sir. <laughs> so, two, uh, two things here. So, saying that it is a state of mind, maybe okay. Yeah, we'll look into that also. But if your happiness is dependent on something winning or losing, can it ever be continuous? No. So again we have to see whether we have been associating the right meaning to happiness or not. If it is something which is based on some event taking place outside, then it can never be continuous. So what could happiness be? That is something that we will investigate again, isn't it? And we have to say happy on certain occasions because generally we are not happy. If we are happy all the time, you know, then they, there may be a different way to express. So that is also possible. So if you look at the intention, what we really want to be, our natural acceptance, we can see that we want to be happy all the time. We intend to be happy all the time, isn't it? But if you look at the current state, what I am, Am I happy if I ask myself? Do I feel prosperous? And is there continuity of our happiness and prosperity? Find it out. So it may be the case that I am sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy. Sometimes I feel prosperous, sometimes I do not feel prosperous. But if you look at the continuity part, there is no continuity. Then you, have, you, you can bring happiness. The question is right now is there are lots of things in the whole wide world, like for example, you know, earthquake can harm. You, can, you are unhappy about it. You know, you can be happy. So there are lots of things in the environment that really sometimes make you unhappy, and you don't have any control over it, and you have to leave it. That that's the way it is, and be be happy about it. After, not be happy, about it, just be normal about it. So you either you are normal or accept the unhappiness as a fair way of dealing. Or otherwise be happy. These are the only two states I think you can think of if you want to lead a good life. Given all that, do I see that there is continuity or not in my life? 
So I am not talking about measurement also right now. You ask yourself any moment, do I feel happy or unhappy? And then you get the very genuine answer. Are you feeling fulfilled or unfulfilled? Are you comfortable within or uncomfortable within? That you can see for yourself. So you can see that you always want to be comfortable within. But it may be the case that there is no continuity here. So you can see the gap. There is a symbol here, explore and verify. So we have to explore at a personal level and verify for ourselves. So you can see that what I really want to be is continuity. What I am, there is no continuity. It may be the case that I am only happy sometimes, most of the time I am not happy. I feel prosperous sometimes, most of the time I feel deprived. It may be the case. Certainly then there is no continuity. So why this gap is there? Are we working less? Why this gap is there? If I work more, I will become happier. I will ensure continuity. Need not be. So where am I going wrong? Why this gap is there between what we really want to be and what we are? And what are we doing to fill this gap? Is it getting filled up or getting wider day by day? Ji, can we give a mic, sir? Yes, sir. No, uh, that what we are, I start from what am I? What am I of yesterday and what I am of today and what I am of tomorrow is not going to be the same. Uh, it's a dynamic one, not a static one. And again, uh, what I am, um, based on that, uh, am I happy or not, again, depends on, uh, not only by myself, it is of the situation. So I may be, sometimes feel that I am happy, but I may be, uh, you know, be the victim of the given situation. So uh, this is a continuous process. And again, so there is no, I, I, don't, I think that it is not possible for me to define that this is what happiness, this is what am I now, so that I am happy. So it's all those three things are going simultaneously as a dynamic process. So I should learn uh, what is given to me with the given situation, how you train yourself to be happy. That is what more important. If I understand that, then I think uh, what I'm going to be tomorrow and I'm also going to be happiness, uh, happy. So I'm always happy. So that is the way I think we have to look into that. that. That's what I feel into that one. This hope, I think this three days exercise will train me that accept as it is. Accept others also as it is. So that you will be happy and you are also making others happy. That is what I wanted to learn in this sense. Partly, Thank yes. You. So, of course. So I do accept the things as they are. But I am also able to see the way I really want to be. I am able to see the way I really want the things to be. And then I can work for it. So accepting is one part. Okay. So I accept what I am today. At the same time, when I am aware of what I really want to be, then only I can move in that direction. Isn't it? Another thing, like what you were mentioning, that I become a victim of the situation, though I am happy from my side. See, again you will see that in that same situation, you may be happy, you may not be happy. Isn't it? The way you associate yourself to that situation may make you happy, may make you unhappy. So again, it boils down to your own level of competence, your own understanding, your own living. But given all this, you know, why this gap is there? Is it getting a filled up day by day or getting wider day by day? One batchmate of mine was mentioning on a WhatsApp group you know, that he is still remembering his B.Tech days and the way they used to rejoice, the way they used to celebrate, so happy they were in those days. So I was mentioning about this and then a common conclusion is that from this whole thing that we are getting unhappier day by day. <laughs> Why do we have to remember our past, our childhood days, our B.Tech days? So the happiness is not growing in life that way. So it may be the case that the way we are growing in our life, this gap is getting wider day by day.
Pardon? <laughs> you know, uh, and also in Tamil, if you know, Ullu Badallam, we are Ullal, in Tirukural, you say it. You know, everything you say like that, and now you say, okay, just, you know, it's getting, it has to be wider, it's okay. But if you don't get it, you should be happy also. That's the challenge. The challenge is you aim high, and sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot for various reasons, and accept the fact, and then live on your life. Then you are always happy. I'm not denying that, but what do I term as high? For example, what would be higher than this to have the continuity of happiness and prosperity? <laughs> Nobel laureate. Again, you just try to find out behind all your aspirations. Maybe you want to become a Nobel laureate or something else. Why do you want to become this? Because you want to be happy. You have assumed that once I become a Nobel laureate, I will be happier. No, I want something more. What is See, that? That's what I'm saying. You never, you never aim low. See, the question is, you never aim low. You keep on aiming high and then go to go. Sometimes you cannot get it. That's what I'm saying. How do you practice your mind to really see that you keep on? Otherwise, there'll be no invention, there'll be no necessity. Everything will be gone. The whole scientific technological improvements are gone. You have to stay with that. At the same time, you've got limitations, either your environment, either finance, or whatever it is. OK, you are not successful. Carry on. Be happy about it. Be happy, at least you try. Mm -hmm. That's the way to look at it. Increasing your an expectation, one are going to be happy at least. Leave alone being prosperity. So, <laughs> since there won't be any, you will never reach this isolation point. You will aspire for one thing, and when you get, you will aspire for something. I mean, even doesn't anybody for the matter. Um, then there is no end to search of happiness. <laughs> You'll keep searching, and you no, know, we say, you know, uh, tomorrow will be happy. When the when is the tomorrow going to come? It will never come. Okay, when tomorrow comes, it becomes today for that day. So tomorrow never comes, <laughs> and you will never be happy. So be content with what you have. Probably will give us some happiness. <laughs> and the more you full happiness, the more you practice, the, the more you practice that, you will always be happy. And again, it's a kind of feeling. Are we feeling happy? When we feel happy, we'll be happy. That's it. exactly it is the internal feeling. That's my, uh, you know, uh, thought process. I was saying just a few minutes ago, or in the presentation, or somebody, he said, you know. Uh, you want to be like Ambani's, you want to be like, you know, other things. But if you don't get it, you think, oh, there are, we are the top 1% of the, of, the, of the population here. Happy, think like that. Then you are happy. See, the question right now is, being happy is its own, the way you develop your mind and internal. And you can always be happy if you want to. And depending on how you manage your, as I said, expectation and whatever you can, I'm happy. Because of various reasons, I'm happy. In fact, when we conduct sessions for students at large, so I ask one question, like, how many of you want to become billionaire? Everyone raises hand. Here also, let me ask, how many of you want to become billionaire? You can raise your hands high, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I have asked this question also, how many of you want to become happy? So everyone was saying, yes. Yes. Now just ask yourself, are you sure that after becoming a billionaire, you are going to be happy in continuity? So it becomes, if you see, it becomes a self-defeating process. Essentially, I want to be happy in continuity, but I have been working for something which is not going to ensure it. I, I might have spent the whole life doing it. We forget the basic aspiration. I am not saying it is right or wrong. I am saying this is your basic aspiration. Think over it. <laughs> How long you will be happy? One day, two days, five days? Then what you will do next? Therefore, based on that, you cannot be continuously happy. Yes. It's only so, a temporary sense of feeling. Waiting for next promotion. Yeah, it's, a it's a sense of feeling. So that's what I'm saying here. Just try to find out, is our effort essentially to understand the true meaning of happiness and prosperity and ensure it, or 
is it just for accumulation of physical facility what do you say are we working to understand the true meaning of happiness prosperity and ensure it or assuming that once i have accumulated a lot of physical facility it will naturally ensure happiness and then i'm just working for accumulation of physical facility sir when we have everything in life we lose happiness when we lose we don't have anything in life we'll have happiness in life <laughs> that's my experience so what is the program coming out of it <laughs> you can just see this is our basic aspiration and there is so much of ha na let's say wide opinion or confusion regarding what this is and we have been working the whole life to ensure it even in future we are going to work for it but we are not clear about this it is just that i am working for something and the goal is not clear so my movement is helter skelter i move in the one direction come back move in another direction come back do this do that keep on trying but my basic aspiration itself, itself is not clear what i really want to be and that's how you'll see that we somehow find this is doable so we try to work for facilities and we get lost in the process essentially you wanted to be happy then you started working for happiness you wanted wanted to work for physical facility you started working for physical facility and in due course of time you forgot about this and you are just involved here and the nitty gritties of your program and the you know, various issues and challenges that you are facing in terms of accumulation of physical facility and then you are caught up in that day and night is that true so have we assume that happiness or prosperity will be ensured when we have enough physical facility if not then what effort we are making other than accumulation of physical facility pardon sai sai chal gaya if there is no expectation definitely you will have will be happy see we have been trying so many ways hai na to have no expectation and if some expectation gets fulfilled so as sir was mentioning why not aim for the sky fulfilled then they will raise their expectation <laughs> again sir uh, <laughs> that's fine sir accumulation of physical facility all of us need this we want one house to live so definitely uh, we have to achieve that then our children so properties for our children so at least one house for a son one house for a daughter so at least <laughs> some property see i say otherwise what will happen uh, they may think uh, what my father has done for me or uh, what my parents have done for me so even though we say but all of us have this in mind something uh, we have to do for the children either during marriage or you do in terms of uh, this uh, buying house are writing your own house in their name or a future what is going to happen so definitely physical facility i would say minimum i would say see this is minimum maybe maximum maybe there is no limit <laughs> to that and this is for our uh, satisfaction <laughs> this is what uh, i feel each and every human being uh, born on this earth uh, when they have this aspirations or whatever feelings they have uh, definitely this will be their uh, thing physical uh, facility or accumulation which we want to do it yeah. minimum minimum i would say thank you sir so <laughs> <laughs> that is what feel fully within the family <laughs> so nice so the exploration has to continue we have time for break now so we'll continue with the exploration and then we'll assemble together again <laughs> right from primary to higher education we are talking about physical facility rarely we are talking about happiness we are talking about prosperity isn't it so our whole conditioning that is being imparted to the students is about physical facility so they try to look for all the problems 
the solution to all the problems in life through physical facility. So, since the light is here, the whole curriculum, the whole syllabus is here, we are talking about this and we are missing out here. The problems on this planet are because people are not happy. But all the efforts are focused on physical facility. Prima facie, if you see. So that has become a serious blunder. Now if you look at it, you will see that when an animal has lack of physical facility, it becomes uncomfortable. When it gets physical facility, it becomes comfortable. For example, when a cow gets a stomach full of grass, it becomes comfortable, sits and chews the cud. So if you have a cow in the house, you, know, you provide food twice to the cow, water thrice to the cow, provide shelter, the cow is very much comfortable. But can you do the same thing merely this much for your child? If you just provide food, provide shelter, provide water to the child, provide clothes to the child, is that enough? No. The animal may be comfortable, but we are not comfortable, isn't it? When a human being has lack of physical facility, he becomes uncomfortable, unhappy. But when he gets the physical facility, he forgets about it and starts thinking about hundred other things. Isn't it? So why is that so? You see, for example, maybe you do not have a house of your own today. You keep on thinking about it. But once you purchase a house, you have a house of your own, you simply forget about it. You start thinking about another thing. I have a house but not a car, right? Or I have a house but it looks so you know, plain. There is no furniture, there is no <laughs> decoration in the house. We start thinking about so many things. So let me ask a very pertinent question here. How many of you are aware how many pairs of clothes you have? Pairs of clothes. <laughs> how many pairs of clothes you have? How many of you are aware? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> And how many of you are going to purchase new clothes this Dashara? <laughs> Dipavali, okay. <laughs> we are seldom aware how many pairs of clothes you have. But once you go to the college and you see in a mall, you know, sale, 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 buy two, get three. Isn't it? You enter to the shop. Yeah, now see. <laughs> when you buy something, that doesn't mean that, you know, if you, if you have money, if it brings happiness, you go and buy it. Because it brings happiness, he's buying it. Otherwise, yeah. you won't buy it. But the problem so is the when question. you do not have money, let's say, then you think about having more money so that you can buy. No, I may not want to buy it at all. If yeah. I don't have money... Is it because of happiness you are buying? Yeah. I'm sure to ask for that need. No, if, if that's need, then I don't really want <laughs> one pair of shirts or one pair of jeans. <laughs> I don't need anything else. What is little Go for a new one. See. There is a need. True. But the question the, right now the is, point is the economy will come to a standstill if we do that. <laughs> The point is, you know, when you lack physical facility, you become uncomfortable, unhappy. But when you get it, you forget about it and start. Th that is so not things. true. That's what I'm saying. That's not true. That's not all true. Because as I told you first time itself, you know, I, I, I lived outside the country for a long time. Now I am living here and I can go to my village and live happily for, for 15 days, one month, two months and everything. There is no fridge there. There is nothing. I live, I, 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 I lie on the floor. I yeah. sit on the floor, I sleep on the floor. No big deal. What's the big deal about it? So that's fine. That's because you have already enjoyed all this. You enjoyed everything, so it becomes this thing. So it becomes, yeah, Viveki right away. That's what you say. I don't think so. Anyway, it's okay. Yes. Sir, uh, sir, we are, I see, I am buying a, a Deepavali dress because my wife is happy. 
and she is buying sari because i am happy <laughs> so, so happiness comes in not <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so it is uh, yes sir so uh, we have to be happy so when other uh, are uh, buying uh, uh, we are getting happy so this is also bless <laughs> you Yes, sir. Then uh, your wife buys yes, saris, not sari, yes, saris. Yes, sir. Are you really happy? Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you not worried about the card payment? No, sir. No. Honest, honest reply. No, sir. You know, we trust, as he said. We trust. As simple as that. <laughs> Uh, sir, may I? Yeah, right. um, as sir said, know that uh, needs and wants, that is, makes the difference and that creates problem. Okay, if uh, we are comfortable and we accept that what is need only, then there won't be any problem. But uh, as a human being with the sixth sense, we always go beyond that and go for the wants. And as uh, our IR director said that, if everybody is comfortable with it, there is no need for any economics or any economy. It can't be. So the question of this buying series, even I used to ask my students, not how many pairs of clothes, no, how many pairs of new clothes which you don't even remember now, it is kept in your uh, uh, almara now. Right, so definitely I think if you dig, you can see at least one or two pairs, which was not the case when we were children. Okay, one pair of dress would have been bought for Diwali, that will be the new dress for another six months. That is a uniform. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm lucky, it was not uniform, it was something, very common thing. But Amma uh, is saying, the new dress is going to go. Now, the new dress is going to go. The new dress is going to go. So, but now it is not like that. Because, listen, it is, this is what I said, you know, victim of the situation. This is the victim, we are victim of the aggressive consumption which has been uh, forced upon to I by the extreme situation of you buy, buy everything, buy everything. Look at this one. It's available. It's th that's why it is not me. Um, I, I'm not able to be myself. I'm given in front of me so many things. Uh, it's a corporate culture. Right? No, that, that's yeah, you know, so we have that, to see. That, that, this aggressive Consum consumer behavior and all those stuff uh, creates a lot of problem. It is because of the wants. Uh, the exploitation is done by the external situation. I am forced and I am also being trapped to be into that one. That's what I understand that this is what happening in that. I, I Please, sir. Uh, for me, take a mic. Take a mic. The, so the same situation happens in my life, but it is not carried by my <laughs> See, every time when we go for purchasing, they buy whatever they want and they force me to get at least one. One hour to go. One hour to go. Then I said, I, I have enough. Not that I have sacrificed, it's definitely not. But I, as you rightly said, there are still about two, three shirts which I have not even used, which we bought it for some reason for some time. And so, Victim of circumstances is true, but still you can avoid it if you badly feel like. But again, you would argue that, see, if I avoid my people will be unhappy, and then I in turn I will be unhappy. No, that's not. See, I mean, as a human being again, when we buy so much of a cloth unwantedly, have we ever thought about a person who is not having a single pair to change the next day? If we think about it, perhaps the rate of buying unnecessarily might come down. Might. Not sure. Of course, I do agree. We are becoming a victim of uh, second, but still you can come out of it. No, um, first of all, you can never say something is a victim here. Because when you say victim, that means you are unhappy. 
the, the thing is right now you got to think is when they when they ask you to buy something by buying something you make them happy if they are happy you are happy too and you can afford it so the, the happiness what should come not a victim victim means you didn't like it and you still got it over that yeah. i always think like that you know what i'm saying they support me to buy it okay i'll buy it i may not use it i may not even like that color it's okay fine it makes her happy and i'm happy too because she's happy He's happy. Finding happiness is not very difficult, actually. <laughs> okay, so one assignment for today is that you have to count your clothes when you go back home. <laughs> so tomorrow we are going to look into that assignment. And how many of you counted and what did you get <laughs> after counting? <laughs> now you have the whole night to count. I honestly believe that. Uh, I don't know. More than 12 hours, you need not count. No, probably then, if that be the case, if you give a request, probably that award will be considered. Or I don't know whether you do not want to share the actual number of pairs of clothes you have. Sorry? Depends. So, check for yourself if you feel happy every day that you are getting enough to eat. Once we have, we do not have enough to eat, we feel that you know, our life is something like a hell, we are not able to do anything in life. But once we are getting enough to eat, we seldom are happy about it. Isn't it? And we start thinking about so many other things. One person was caught on the charges of corruption in NCR and it was found that he had 1,000 houses at that time which were on record. <laughs> Houses. <laughs> so that is the case. When we lack physical facility, and we become uncomfortable, unhappy. But when we get the physical facility, we forget about it and start thinking about so many other things. So you'll see that when a human being has lack of physical facility, he or she becomes uncomfortable, unhappy. But once he or she gets the facility, simply forget about it and start thinking about 100 other things. Let us see if we know how many pairs of clothes we have. If there were a shortage of clothes, it would be a problem for us. <clears throat> but now that we have clothes, we may not even know how many we have. And yet we may keep collecting more and more. Isn't it? This is just an example. When you don't know how many clothes we really need, we can be in this situation. We have a problem, we don't have clarity about our needs. So as we go along, we'll see how we can make out our needs. You know? And is it so that wants and needs to, have, to be have different? They have to be different, is that so? Or there could be a different scenario also? So they are obviously different. Wants and needs are different. Yeah. So presently we think like that, isn't it? So can there be a situation when our wants are the same as our needs? Wants and needs are different actually. Needs are basically, you know, basic needs. But Needs and wants are not the same. Uh, needs are, for example, it could be even the basic needs like food, clothing, and shelter. But the problem happens is when we convert the needs to wants. Wants is, for example, I'm feeling hungry is a need. So I need something to eat or something to take so that I satiate that hunger. But the problem is what I want to satiate the hunger is more uh, problematic here. Uh, like, uh, say, if somebody says, I need a pizza, to you know, satiate my hunger, there lies the problem. If somebody just takes anything, it could be anything, okay, to you know, uh, satiate that hunger, then it is fine. So needs are always there for all the human beings. Problem happens when it gets converted to wants. And you no, know, like as sir was uh, you know, rightly pointing out about wants and needs, and he was telling about motives and other things. And I would also like to point out about the forced consumption, not only the forced consumption, that results in forced unhappiness and forced sadness also. Like we will be feeling happy, but somebody will come and say, my God, you're happy, like see what others are doing and you're happy with this. Now that is the biggest problem. And those people are the same own people who are around us. And uh, as you say, you know, people become more uh, materialistic also. Uh, like we keep on buying and uh, we buy and there are so many things at our home where we would have bought it but we have never used it. We just yeah. buy it. So the issue is that we want to be happy but it may be the case that we are trying to ensure happiness through physical facility. And then the scenario is that our wants and needs are become, becoming different. You know? 
So it may be the case that the need for happiness is not going to be fulfilled by physical facility. There is something which is more important than that. And that is something that we have to look into. And that's why this gap is there. So you see you know, that we have a problem when we do not have clarity about our needs. And how do we identify our needs correctly? How do we understand our want correctly? This is something that we are going to explore further. Oh, if I could uh, say, uh, uh, hairline uh, partition between need and want, the needs are the ones without which you can't live. I can put it in a simple uh, language. Needs, uh, I mean, as uh, Madam said, like, you know, uh, food, shelter, cloth, without which you can't live. But needs, without the satisfying the needs, we can still live, exist. Probably happily or unhappily, that depends. <laughs> but needs, without which you can't live. So you need to have that. But wants, we can still avoid. Yeah. 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 Or start from the basic needs. It is a rotating. It is a, a human life is like a rolling wheel. Yeah, the human uh, human being is not satisfied uh, even with the self actualization needs. Again, he comes to the basic level, yes. physiological needs, yes. from where he wants to start, and he is also stopping there to live. Again, he uh, moving to the next, next, and reaching there and coming back like that it is going. This, this is where uh, the concept of uh, demonstration effect comes. You come with a quote, uh, my need is to have a shirt and pant and comfortable. But I see that you are uh, good looking, always you are good looking, with a quote at the so, so with that, I feel that, you know, that is a want, need convert into want. Uh, it is a demonstration effect. You have demonstrated very well so that I want to emulate from that. This is not only in this one, everything. We see right now what is happening in the marriages, the way in which the marriages are being conducted. Uh, there is a demonstration effect. They, everybody is uh, having that. Have you ever heard of, uh, you know, so many stages in the marriages in, in Tamilian life? And the, you know, Mardani Vekar function, in the function, in the Kalkala Vachiranga, it's all completely demonstration effect. If it, in Gerikra, I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry, right. Uh, the bridegroom is not even wearing the Tamilian, uh, the, the culture dress. They get, you know, a demonstration effect from other cells. These are all the, you know, the, the human being, um, uh, they, they go, they, they, they convert their needs into wants. Uh, and that creates a lot of problems. Uh, that is where the need of physical, uh, physical, what is that? Physical facility is needed. I want to uh, conduct my son's marriage in a better way uh, than my neighbor, so that I wanted to have a lot and a lot of physical facility. And so need is converting into want. Uh, that, that's what I see here into that. Thank you, sir. Nice, nice. So you can see, yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, sir, I really want to say this one point. See, actually, uh, here we are talking about so many values, and uh, we are all so many people here to learn values so that we can teach values. But then again, uh, two things which I want to note. One is about needs. Need of one person may be different from a need of a different person, right? So everybody here uh, uh, about dresses or about uh, telling a very uh, sophisticatedly all the men staff are putting it on the wife and saying and everybody else is clapping for that. I don't think that's the right value. You know, uh, for probably a woman might like uh, wearing a dress for various reasons, but at the same time the need of a man could be different, right? Right? And uh, when you're putting a point somewhere, cracking a joke, probably on putting everything on a woman, uh, saying the dresses means women, not really. I don't agree that. See, usually I've seen many people say that uh, even if a woman is uh, wearing a pavo husband, ye pavo, e nanga vailaka varliya. We did not come for work. Are we not earning? Are, can't we buy our own clothes? See, where there is a problem when there is no balance. When we don't know that we don't have enough money, you're going overboard, buying, which has become into a shopolic. Uh, situation or it becomes something which you're not able to manage your uh, family well, then yes, that is something which you really have to ponder on. But tr uh, trust me, 
99% of the women, I say maybe one person somewhere, they know how to balance what is the family, how much we can spend. The woman is the one who puts a budget into the house and say this much should go to the dress, whether the dress is for this people, them people and all, whether how much should go to the grocery. Probably the men is putting somewhere else efforts, where the men are not able to give time for the family to groom the family who are the next generation. That is the place where women is placing. So I request all of you to please Remember when, see, we are not respecting that type of womanhood here, then what are we going to preach our children, right? When we are cracking jokes on somebody else, uh, saying that uh, they wear uh, clothes, if it is uh, this one, they, you know. From 8.30 to 5.30, not sufficient. So we should be here <laughs> for the three days, uh, stay over here overnight. Uh, I don't know whether the Dean Sir will permit us to stay here. <laughs> so in that case, uh, it will be a wholesome learning. So no, we, also... I, we can be here till Tuesday also. Uh, Tuesday, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Nice, nice. So one thing that we can make out through all the discussion is that <clears throat> physical facility is necessary for human being. But look at the concern that we have raised right now. Something more is also required. So it is necessary. But something more is also required, over and above physical facility. What met that more is there? Nowadays, uh, they want to simplify the marriage. They may conduct a marriage in a temple or church, etc., and they will have only one reception, that's all. So they want to minimize the expenses. So unnecessarily, if they spend more money, that is going to affect the entire life of the couples. Okay, for that, nowadays, uh, even for uh, uh, educated peoples are trying to reduce the expenses of the marriage. If you conduct five days marriage, uh, I, I don't know how much expenses may happen. So we can have one format for marriage also, conduct workshop for five days and conclude by marriage. <laughs> Both the parties attending the workshop together. <laughs> sir, sir, in that, yes. Saab told the five days, the, he is thinking about the five days marriage that is to be conducting on nowadays for one day's expenses. Earlier, five days expenses are equal to nowadays marriage for the one day. Because at that time, the five days marriage is, that is for happiness to join with the family members. All the family members are together and they have more happiness for that. The five days expenses now, even that amount, nowadays one day expenses for that half only they are spending for that five days. That is for the happiness. Yeah. So we can see that something more is also required. Now just find it out. What else is required? <coughs> Now just check for yourself, is the unhappiness in our families more due to lack of physical facility or more due to lack of fulfillment in the relationship? <laughs> what do you see? Is it more due to lack of physical facility or more due to lack of relationship? Relationship, isn't it? Even if you feel temporarily that this is more due to lack of physical facility, then you can further investigate it. Let's say, a very crude example, there is a family of four people, everybody requires, let's say, five chapatis in a day or five idli in a day, okay? So in a day you require 20 idli, maybe some day there are only 18 idlis, two idlis are less. Will there be a fight in the family or not? If you have good relationship, you will feed the other first and then eat. But if there is lack of relationship, you know, there will be snatching for food fighting for food and there will be accumulation for the next day because the same scenario appears the next day then how do we manage that kind of thought would be there so if you see there are so many family feuds if you look at the court cases so many family feuds and most of the families which are you know, fighting for property dispute or something there is enough physical facility there but what is lacking is relationship yeah yeah, and it is something to do with the relationship part. So this is something that we can make out. That the problems are more due to lack of fulfillment in the relationship. But it may be the case that we are working more and more for physical facility.
Yes. So the example that are coming, when our wants and needs become different, why is that so? Because I need food as well as I need respect. Respect is something to do with the relationship. Isn't it? But if you try to fulfill the need for respect through food, through clothes, then your wants and needs become different. Very good. Then your needs appear to be unlimited. Very good. Isn't it? And then again find out how much time and effort are investing for physical facility and how much time and effort for fulfilling the relationships. Let us articulate in a single day how much time we are spending in a week, in a month. The challenge comes in, the fulfillment of the relationship, the fulfillment of the relationship is differs from person to person, from family to work and everything. And that's why the challenge comes. Yeah. How to fulfill the relationship is really a challenge. That is the next part. Whether between, between your kids, between your wife, between your parents, in-laws, the family all together, then work, work environment is very different. And that's where all the problems come in. Fulfill, the thing, physical facility is nothing second. No. Fulfillment of relationship in a working environment is drastically different because it has got a complexity of, of humans interactions. And that's where the challenge comes in. Yeah, so how to ensure it? How to fulfill the relationship? That is something that we're going to discuss next. But you can see that the problems are more due to lack of relationship, but we are investing most of the time and effort for physical facility. The same kind of problem. Sir, when we talk the about uh, investing time, we take only two parameters here. One you say physical facility, another you say the relationship. It is not the only two items uh, which we spend time uh, for uh, our own uh, all activities. We spend time for idea. our own self-development, our just own... This is just a beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can see the same dichotomy here again. The ring has fallen in the pond and we are looking for it below the street light because the whole training is for facility, physical facility. Yes, ma'am. Take a mic. What I'm reflecting is the fulfillment of time and efforts in a relationship is so much of gender driven uh, and that's so imbalanced. Uh, that is kind of thing that is cannot be fulfilled. The gap will remain the huge. So if I see fulfillment in the relationship, a lot of things, endless things comes because I'm a Diff one gender type of gender and my responsibility is totally different and the efforts and time will be drastically changed however being the other gender will have drastically changes efforts and time so this balance thing will not be there at all and then since i want and then and the, that, that gap will always be there and there will be some so we'll look into it. Is it something to do with the gender or something else? Uh, some that we have to look into. Yes, for example, it is being a woman or female, I am uh, it, to do lots of things, like from 5 a.m. to 12 p.m., other than the 8 or 10 working hours. However, for others, it may not be the same. It may be start from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So there itself, the time itself is just saying. There are other things also, but just for example, I'm saying. So we can see that the gender uh, yeah, plays a major role. See, in yeah, this again we can see it may vary from family to family, one thing. I, Second thing. I don't think it's a gender issue. The reason is, it's a, it's a cup, right? Whether sometimes you fill the water, my wife will fill the water more, and I fill the water less. Some of the time I fill the water more, she will fill the water less. So what is happiness is related to relationship for itself. It's got nothing with gender. Sometimes I'll be serving her, sometimes she'll be serving me, it's no big deal. So it's you know? a one time, or sometime, or it's the always, or with the majority. That's the way we have to see and have the acceptance. That acceptance is not there. 
See, that is the study of how we are living. If I am saying something, that this is the concern I have, that acceptance is not there. Like, that totally it comes like, okay, it may not be the case. Yes, I agree, this may not be the case. But it is there. So there is no acceptance at first place itself. Yeah, so we can make an appraisal of the current scenario. Okay, it may vary from region to region, person to person, family to family. It may be the case. Mm. So the but at the same time, we have to sir. look into, at the same time, we can look into what we really want to be. The compulsive activities in a mind, human mind, mm. and sharing and caring, it has come down. That is why all this, this kind of problems happens with the fulfilling the relationship. And when you say a physical facility, a hundred years ago, a king and queen cannot have that facility, but we have. So in a way, we need to follow these human values. Actually, what is the result? The sharing and caring, we substitute the physical things now. That's what we do. Another thing that we have to look into when we talk about... You buy a dress, you buy a girl jewel. And you walk away with that. Sir, uh, one small observation for her uh, remarks. Uh, we are, why are we focusing only on the family relationships? Only between a husband and a wife we are actually thinking and talking. Not necessarily. A relationship can be between two employees. No, you, you took it in some personal manner, both, both actually. Uh, but uh, it can be relationships. Yeah, but not necessarily. No, uh, it can be I between mean, two female and two male. I mean, if they would have told it is a gender re regular basis, if they were told, who wouldn't have taken it personally. No, what? They said no, wife. No, no, wife. What I'm telling you is the way. No, no, no. Uh, that's your Morning, assumption. it is all about wife rather than no, that's uh, human values. It can be on a workplace. It can be in a road. Yeah. Okay. You would be really happy be if it is generic. Sir. Yeah, that's you would be also. really happy. Relationship is a generic term, so you don't assume that it's only between husband and wife. No, when it is wife, I assume that it is only between husband and wife, sir. When a word is used about wife, we assume it is husband and wife. Okay, if it is generic, men, women, we understand it could be any relationship. Yeah, yeah, but but when you say wife, tell. wedding, I assume it is wife and husband only, <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I just wanted to say, no, all our uh, discussions and, uh, uh, I mean, observations are between uh, family relationship, between husband and wife. That too, only between husband and wife. Not even between mother-in-law, father-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, nothing. So That's still a complex problem. We can change our, no, we can change our discussion. That was my point. No, Not, here, uh, yeah. the, here oh, the relationship yeah. so is, as I That said, is next session we will take up, sir, in-laws. No. Relationship is, in the, in the family, no, if I could, uh, if I could pitch in again, the relationship we are not talking about in a family. Uh, the uh, wife, husband, kids and all that's not. It's between two colleagues, two neighbors. I mean, that's what the general relationship, the human value talks about. Maybe in a lighter sense, probably we touched upon more about a, you know, husband and wife. It is not so. No, it is not light, sir. That is what our point was. Don't yeah. take it light. We don't want you to take it light. No, no. The relationship is f among all we the have a human. balance. We will talk it in general. Human. We will have a balance. Sir, it all started <laughs> with you. You started with the sari. Me? Yeah. Don't start oh with my the God, sari. <laughs> the, the ceremony was inaugurated by you. All because of Jai Kumar. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now we can see the pitch rising. Yes. No? <laughs> the reason why start with the wife, the reason is you are, you are stuck with the family. And for a longer time you spend a relationship, so you want to start that topic. It's okay, you know, you can start any other thing because for me a relationship in a working environment may be lasting about five years, ten years, and the boss will change, the environment will change. So we don't. We, we want to start off somewhere in a very profound. So you took the family first, but we can always take it, extend it all the way down. The relationship which you mentioned Correct. between a uh, grandmother and a uh, kid, yes. a granddaughter or a grandchild. So that's also a relationship. Now that is missing. That is where the human values are missing now. The grandparents will pass and on the human values working, to their kids. Yeah. When we that are working here also as a team, there also we can find out how much time we are investing for facilities and how much time we are investing for relationship. How much time do we spend in a week you know, trying to understand each other? dialogue, have a dialogue with each other and you know, try to uh, getting to know about each other and how much time we are just talking about courses and courses and research and you know. Mind is one person not the infrastructure, <laughs> the Yeah. But it's done, this is the task list that, this and everything. And you can oh, see that. Okay, fine, fine, go ahead. 
Now, and we can see that we invest so much of time when relationships go bad. Somebody is not complying, somebody is you know, trying to you know, do something untoward in the department or in the institution. And then we have to do so much of work because of that. Because we are not investing time on relationship. Even if in the institution, yeah. <clears throat> you cannot say that you need to spend about some time on relationship. You can't force it. You have to develop it. For, for example, by f for one person, the relationship I can do it within two within two days, within 20% or five. For some other point, things are a bit longer time. So you cannot go by time as a measurement of fulfilling the relationship. So time is How much can saying... you take to really fulfill it? That's what more important yeah. is. And what is the result you achieve in, in fulfilling the relationship? Because if I just spend more time, that doesn't mean I cannot do my work. So you need to think about that very carefully, you know. It's important to really make sure that you have the fulfillment of relationship to achieve the, the targets that we want to achieve. That's what you should have. Yeah, but again, we are setting up targets, maybe merely for physical facility or something to do with that. And we are forgetting the target to do with the relationship or the mutual fulfillment in the relationship. No no, 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 I didn't say that. I think the important thing is in a working environment is really build the fulfill the relationship enough at the required level to achieve the physical facility targets. That's the important thing. In my house, that's a different thing. But in a you know, working environment, otherwise we'll never meet our target, we'll never aspire or anything. But correct amount of fulfillment of relationship is important to achieve the target. Otherwise, we'll never achieve the target. So that's how you have to see it. You have to use it as a, the result is only for the working on is the physical facility is what the result. But the question is, relationship should be built enough to really meet the targets. Then I'll be spending only counseling all the people and I will never do my work. <laughs> okay. I'll come to that. When we set our targets also, what would be our complete vision for setting up the target? So we can see that there's a dichotomy sir, again excuse here. Me, sir. Uh, yeah. sir, here how much time and effort are we investing? Uh, we have spoke about a lot much about this relationships. I just want to have a clarity on this physical facility. Is it for building the physical facility or that could be a service also? See, is it only two things? One is phys uh, physical facility and the number two is relationship or is there any other thing which can be added here? Because... Uh, can be added, yes. Yeah. But presently so we yeah, are comparing these two. Uh, only about this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can you explain, uh, give me some examples on this physical facility that you are telling on time. All these are facilities, investing. like we are sitting in this hall, this building is a facility, this mic, this uh, presenter. No, investing, the word which you are utilizing. So we can find out, like there are 24 hours in a day, how much time did I invest for working for physical facility, how okay. much time did I invest to understand each other, to know each other, okay. isn't it, to know oneself. So all that we have to articulate. In a whole lifespan, how much time did I spend for facilities? How much time did I spend for fulfilling the relationship? Okay. Understanding the relationship, understanding each other. That is something that we have to articulate. So we'll see that the unhappiness is more due to lack of fulfilling relationship, but most of the time and effort gets spent for physical facility. Isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> So for human being, physical facility is necessary, but relationship is also necessary. I think we are able to see this, isn't it? The other way yeah. <laughs> Very nice, if you are able to see that, yes. In fact, when we say that somebody is put up in a jail, what happens there? He is provided for the physical facilities, he provided food, clothes, the shelter is provided. What is lacking is relationship. He's cut off from the relationship with the family, with the society, and that becomes a punishment. He gets a jail <laughs> Yeah, in fact, it's a good possibility that these programs can be developed for jails also. In fact, we have been conducting workshops in jails also. Yeah. Yes, yes. So on examining carefully, we find that this is a fundamental difference between animals and human beings. Physical facility necessary for animals and necessary for human beings also. But for animals, physical facility necessary as, as well as largely adequate. For human being, it is necessary but not adequate. Are we able to see this? And if you at all feel that relationship is needed for the animal, it is much more needed for us. For example, if you have a pet in the house, you just pat on the back and you know, keep in the lap for some time, it becomes comfortable. If you do not fulfill the wishes of the child and just pat on the back, and <laughs> fondle it, right? You can see what will happen. 
It means it's not complete. Something more is required. Not complete. Yeah. So I just wanted to share one thing that uh, uh, with one uh, sentence that physical facilities is adequate for animals but not adequate for human beings. But we are judging for animals, isn't it? We've never heard them. So when you have a pet at home, we have basic facilities, like it has got its food, it has got a small cage, and things like that. It is much more happy when it sleeps with us on the bed, when it has little more facility. But we are drawing a line there that for animals this is enough, but we want more. Animals also want more. Yeah, but you can also see that, let's say there's a lion in the jungle. The lion, once it has a den, it will not go to make a den of double stories. <laughs> but we do think. But it would like a bigger den. <laughs> Line so, is always placed on, you know, somewhere high. But again, we can keep it open. The concern yeah. is not the animal. The concern is to be able to see what we actually need. Yeah, no, I'm just telling that we always have an attitude. We're always thinking about us. But people around, it's not human beings always. Every creature needs more. We can see what more. Yes. Anna, we can see what more. If you observe the animals, we can see their conduct also. We can understand them also. So I have something to ask and as well as add also. Uh, when you ask which is more important, whether it is a physical facility or uh, uh, the, uh, the relationship, obviously we, we say that Okay, relationship is important, but uh, my point of concentration here is, uh, is it not lack of physical facility which also has an impact on the relationship, fulfillment of relationship? Yeah, so that's what I mentioned. So if you have lack of physical facility, but if you have relationship, you fulfill the need for physical facility together with a feeling of relationship. Sometimes not possible, sir, because that results in this. Yeah, it means there is something more to be done for relationship. The physical facility will not fulfill the relationship then. It is like, no, like uh, uh, McGregor's theory of X and y, like, sorry, uh, two-factor two theory, they say. There are certain things, uh, if it is absent, it will result in dissatisfaction. When they are present, it doesn't cause any satisfaction. <laughs> Yeah. So, in fact, we are saying something similar. If you don't have physical facility, right, your needs are not fulfilled. You feel unfulfilled. But even if you have the facility, it's not sure that relationship will get fulfilled. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that. Yes. So, this we can make out that as a human being, we do require two things. Of course, we require the physical facility, but we do also require relationship. And as ma'am was saying, maybe we can Anna, go for it first. That we require relationship, in addition we require the physical facility. So the physical facility is fulfilled with nature. Relationship is fulfilled with human being. But we'll see that even though Anna, we are able to recognize that yes, the two are necessary, what happens in the family? Although we have recognized the need for relationship, we do get into arguments, opposition, fights, even in the family, with close friends, Sir, with colleagues me. at work. I would like to add one more thing. Yes. Sir, I think with physical facilities, at least the people who are sitting here, I think we are all satisfied. Okay. But at least our days, I think there are other next generation people also sitting here. I remember those good old days where the family used to sit down and the mother used to have just one plate of food and she used to give it to everybody. Okay, now we are on the dining table. We are uh, single families and even in that also all, if there are husband, wife, two children, all of them are not eating together on the dining table. Okay, then what is it? You say that physical facility is more important than relationship. I think many people who are sitting here who had this kind of life earlier must be craving for this again. That's the answer what you had given in the beginning when you said you were in US, you have faced all or seen all the comfort zone. Now you say that I like sleeping down. 
okay yeah, so i I'm think that is many people uh, miss that now and they crave for it so i'm not saying that physical facility is more important than relationship i'm not saying that no, at no. all no no i'm yeah. just telling so it is more important it's the yes. relationship yeah it yeah. is it's a relationship which is more important yeah. than exactly. the physical yeah. even now you see those people living in bungalows might not be happy or yes. Yes. having food together but in a hut there might be four people the husband might be just bringing the food on for the night because he must have earned that and come inside but all three or four of them would sit and eat together i think that is more happiness than the physical facility certainly in fact a research was conducted in harvard and that is termed as the longest research in history so that started in 1930s and the person who presented it in a ted talk he was the third generation of scientists and then what they did they conducted research on 724 people in us half of them belong to haves half of them belong to have nots and then they track their life you know what happened to them what happened to the next generation and so on and they could see that some of the people who were belong to the have category one of them became the president of us some became billionaires some committed suicide some were you know uh, sent to jail for committing crimes and all those ups and downs were seen a similar thing was seen among the have nots also then did some led a normal life some went to jail some became again you know very rich people in the society and then they were trying to make out who were happier and they came out with three conclusions the first conclusion was that those who had good relationships were happier isn't it this was the first conclusion second thing was relationship doesn't mean connections okay it is the quality of relationship so you may be having 5000 friends on facebook but may not be able to share about yourself with any so it is the quality of relationship that matters and the third thing that they concluded is that the health of the brain you know went longer lasted longer if you had good relationships so we can of course see in fact it is we are 2060 they had an analysis saying that if we have strong soft skills Uh, HPR 2016 on um, Harvard Business Review. They had a very clarity saying that if somebody has got a good soft skills and a good family background, that means relationship, family relationship, they tend to really have a high EQ, not IQ, the EQ, and tend to do really better than the people who are not like that. It's only better, not they can say all the people made it or something. It's only percentage-wise. There was some topic about 72 percent or something. The people have got higher EQ, <coughs> higher EQ and everything. So I think that uh, I, I don't remember the the author of that. The author was a, was an American, but I think it was done very well. They said soft skills, soft skills means relationship and all those things. So they put it together. So they looked into the trajectory Again. of life. What happened to them? They looked. They talked to them. They interviewed uh, them. They conducted survey correct. in the relations. What What they do is they take a survey. They take a survey with them, with the peers if there is working environment, with the with the bosses and the subordinates, and also with the family members. They have a big survey for each and every individual. About they have got about 78 surveys. They take it for per person. Uh, and also him. And also him. He has to fill it too. He has to fill it too. Both. <laughs> Correct. You make some. You make somebody unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that is just a case study that I cited. But we can observe for ourselves, you know, that what is more important for us, relationship or physical facility, you know, what makes us happier. Like that is something that we can observe so you'll see that although we have recognized the need for relationship but these things might be occurring in our family in at at workplace you know we do get into arguments opposition fights <laughs> even in the family with close friends at marketplace and every time we have a fight we want to resolve it we say sorry we patch up promise not to fight in future we may avoid talking for days together don't sleep So even though we don't want to, a fight does take place once again. Why is that happening? We don't want to fight with each other. That may be happening in the family. That may be happening in the department. That may be happening in the institution. Why is that happening? That's a good question. I don't know. 
<laughs> and you see that we want the other to improve. Whenever there is some scenario like this, no, we are complaining about others. This person, you know, is the bad person, isn't it? He has this wrong attitude, this wrong, you know, habits, this wrong way of working, and we are trying to find faults with others. Please, please don't describe anything, sir. Please. I jumped on you. I jumped on you. No, he is happy seeing you, baby. <laughs> and then you see that we want the other to improve, and the other also wants us to improve. Most of the time, if you look at the debates, the arguments which are taking place, what is happening? We are pointing out faults in others. The other is pointing out faults in us. And is this happening or not? Are incidences of reaction, not speaking to the other, not even listening to the other, arguing, debating, and sometimes also leading to divorce? Increasing or decreasing day by day? Separation and then followed by divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Separation followed by divorce. If you look at the Western countries, in many countries, the divorce rates have gone above 50%. Yes. And, uh, 53%, 54%. And, uh, surveys are suggesting that people are fearing marriages. In Japan, and, uh, they conducted a survey that came in Times of India. 36% women and 29% men fear marriage. They don't want to marry because they fear that relationship. So you'll see that on one hand, physical facilities are growing. On the other hand, we are suffering relationships. So in spite of our acceptance for relationship, why is it happening? Even though we do accept that, yes, I want to have fulfilling relationship, but still this is happening. And also even growing day by day. Is it because of people developing strong likes and dislikes now? Is yeah, we'll look into that. Yes, 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 that could be one reason. Okay. Yeah. No, no, because you develop strong likes and dislikes, naturally that, that will stay with people. That's why when you get married young, you know how to adjust. Anything more, you develop a very strong this thing in your, in your, you got in you and you can never change after that. A news came in Pune that one couple you know, got married and then they went for honeymoon to Singapore and on the flight only they had a debate that whose convent school is better <laughs> and by convent, the time convent. they landed back in India convent <laughs> which convent event is better yeah and by the time they landed back in India they had decided to divorce you know? <laughs> so why is it happening so you can see let us find out what is our perspective on relationship today so let us find out. There are three options here. Do we want to live in relationship that is harmony with others? Yes. Do we want to live in opposition with others? No. But is it so that we believe that living has to be necessarily in opposition with others? And the struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive. Now you can see that you know, we want to have fulfilling relationship. The survival of the fittest is a wrong connotation to use here because the survival of the, the fittest word here means if you know how to work on fulfilling relationship, you survive well. Yeah. That's what fittest, survival of the fittest is true. You can change, that's not true. But what is the fittest means here? The fittest means here is relationship. Fulfillment of relationship is what it means. So if you fulfill the relationship, you survive well, well and you are happy about it. So that's, that's the way to see that. That's why you are giving that meaning here, yeah. <laughs> but that is not the meaning conveyed in education. If you see from childhood, early childhood, we are teaching this kind of theory to the children, isn't it? That the other person is your rival, you have to survive, so you have to struggle with the other. If the other survives, you are not going to survive. You know, the industries are thriving like that, the businesses are thriving like that. No, what you say is, hey, this guy is a very good intelligent person. You be a friend with him, get to know him better, have a relationship, then you'll do better. Then you'll survive. That's the way to think. Yeah. But let us see, what is the common notion today? Not what is the appealing one, but a this thing, coexisting one, cooperating one. That's what the value you got to bring in. Take a mic.
One of the reason for this uh, uh, relationship, whatever you mentioned that about divorce or uh, stay in relationship, somewhere even values and physical facility has also played a very big role. Like if you see in uh, like 20, 30 years back when there's a fight in a family for whatever smallest reason, when you go back and tell your mother, they'll tell you, um, you try to adjust, you know, it is, it is okay, it happens, you need to do this. Uh, that's fine. You know, that is the value they used to teach us. Don't fight for the small things. Think big. Uh, you should think uh, think from their perspective what could have gone wrong and they would try. But uh, what I see the change now, because uh, when I talk to some uh, uh, student or students about their uh, strained parents relationship and all, what they say is when, uh, uh, when there's a fight in the family and they go back to the mother and they ask, they say, don't worry, come out. We have enough, we can take care of you. Now that values have also somewhere changed because so of us, because we are giving them physical, because first it was specifically, one of the reason uh, for a woman or a man to be together was uh, maybe they're not independent, they're dependent on somebody for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for survival. Uh, so even if it was a very strained relationship, they're struggling through a very bad time, but still at that, that point of time, because they, they are not independent, they don't have enough facility because of society, whatever the reason, they to stick on to the family for good or bad. That is again debatable, but now uh, because uh, the women has come out and they started becoming independent and also parents have acquired so much of physical facility, single child and all. They're giving them so much of uh, pampering or uh, uh, somewhere that, uh, saying that when they go back and tell them ki I have a problem, instead of telling how to I, I come out of the problem, they try to say, come out, we are there for you. You don't have to really be in a strained relationship, even without knowing that intensity. Yeah. That could be one of the problem where we are uh, lacking. Yeah, so do we call it as a value or notion? And you can see that these kinds of notions are prevailing in the family, in the society, and they are even growing Correct. now. And that's how even though we accept to be in relationship, we want to have fulfilling relationship, but going by these notions, we are not able to fulfill the relationships. Isn't it? And let us, let us find out what is our present perspective, which view do we promote at home, in the family, in schools and college, in the society? Is it the naturally acceptable view? So maybe through education, we are you know, developing such kinds of perspectives. Even in the family, even in the environment, these kinds of perspectives are being nurtured systematically. And that's how, even though we naturally accept to have fulfilling relationship, we are not able to fulfill, isn't it? So you'll see that right understanding is also essential for a human being. Going by these kinds of notions, which we have not verified, not validated, just assumed to be true, you know, without understanding. That is leading to problems in relationships. Now, going by that same statement that was mentioned there, you just look at this. Have we really verified this? Let's say there is a house in which two people are there. One person is strong physically, the other person is weak physically. And the food is enough for only one person. Who will get the food? Going by this principle, who will get the food? The strongest one, isn't it? Now, if the stronger one is the mother and the weaker one is the child, who will get the food? Child. <laughs> now, the relationship comes into picture, right? The whole thing gets you know, different. So, we are not talking about, you just see how many courses we have been teaching since childhood to the child, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the child, which talk about relationship, in which we get clarity about the relationship. Seldom. We assume that this is something to be taken care of at a personal level. This is something subjective. You have to understand yourself. You have to talk in your family. We all already have so much of you know, credits in the curriculum. How do we include these kinds of courses here? Isn't it? So since childhood, we have been ignoring such kind of discussion. We have been also filling the child with these kinds of notions and then suffering on the part of relationship. Isn't it? Suffering in family, suffering in organizations. So you'll see that this is another essential component for a human being. Right understanding is also necessary for a human being. With right understanding only, we have the clarity about relationship with human being and we are able to fulfill. Right understanding means I am able to understand myself. Then only I am able to understand the other also. If we do not understand each other, how do we fulfill the relationship at all? And then we have differing notions. Living on the same, under the same roof, we have different notions about oneself. We have different notions about life. We have different perspectives about progress and growth and development and we seldom talk about that, isn't it? Sitting in the same classroom, you know, all the students are having different perspectives and we do not have time to discuss these things, 
we feel that our syllabus will not get completed our students will not compete well in the examinations they will not get good placements and then we are forced to work only for teaching physical facility about physical facility isn't it while we are suffering on this part so with right understanding only i get clarity about the relationship what it is what essentially it is we are going to talk about it at length you know, in this workshop and then we also have the clarity about how much physical facility we need otherwise on one hand the physical facilities are growing but on the other hand the same sense of deprivation is also growing the feeling of sharing with the other is coming down the facilities are growing but the feeling of sharing with the other is coming down the sense of deprivation is growing and ultimately we are suffering so three things as a human being so as it was being asked also no is there something more to the two options yes so there are three things which are necessary for a human being let us find out whether all the three are required or not can we do without any of them are all three required let us take a closer look at this and find out are all the three required you know so is something redundant here and if this is fulfilled is anything more than this required let us find out look at into look into all your wants do all your wants have to do with only this thing or something more something else look into all your wants do we really need anything more than this yeah probably the environment of the bonding between the link between these three yeah so the link is already there yeah <laughs> so and whether we are working for all the three and if all three are required then what would be the priority what do you think what would come at the first priority the first one right understanding and then followed by relationship and then physical facility so if you look at it for a human being this is the first priority you take a mic at the macro level is right this is the priority is right but the micro level if you go sometimes the priorities do change and you have to adjust to that environment for example for example relationship sometimes more important than the right to understanding yourself because you already understood yourself so phones are concentrated on the right the human being understand relationship yes yeah, so if you look at, at relationship time. also essentially what we aspire for is the feeling the trust the respect and that can be ensured only through right understanding how do i trust the other if i do not understand the other human being how do i respect when i do not understand what respect means does respect only mean gifting on certain occasions hai na or touching the feet or bowing in front of somebody or something else so that might be something to do with the expression part but the feeling is missing and why it is missing because the understanding is missing the respect also i have a uh, i i don't anyway let, let us not talk about but anyway generally respect means you know when somebody walks in getting up and everything all are not respect how do you feel inside is very important how do you respect him or her inside yeah that shows by action so you will know only that the person is say, respecting you or not is only by the actions or the deeds he does or whatever it is than just you know getting up and all this sir say sir and everything you know i just i'm thinking loudly you know yeah Because but the I same that, action but the same action may not denote the same feeling the same action may not denote the same feeling i may rise but i might not be having the feeling of respect i might be having a feeling of fear for the other yeah yeah so these innate feelings are ensured through right understanding this is what we are being and what we are saying here so as a human being if you see in our life and you know, we require all the three and with the correct priority for a human being it is the right understanding which comes at the first priority which is going to be ensured in the self within me isn't it and then relationship with human being and then the physical facility with the rest of nature we'll see that with right understanding only i am able to make out the right feeling which fulfills me and the other so that we are able to live with mutual happiness so the way the you know issues were being raised that is because the right feeling is not understood isn't it 
So for example, in a family, we are living together, we are working for physical facility, but we are differentiating between, an, uh, no, between a child and a grown-up person, between a man or a woman, isn't it? Between a literate and illiterate. Then, ultimately, the relationship is not going to be fulfilling. And with right understanding only, I am able to make out the correct need for physical facility, how much I require. So for example, I require clothes in terms of physical facility and I require relationship. I require feeling of respect. Now when I go to fulfill the need for respect by physical facility, then I assume that this is unlimited because I require the feeling of respect every moment. So then there is a mad rush for physical facility. Why? Because we want respect every moment and we are assuming that this is going to be ensured by physical facility. Otherwise, I can fulfill the two needs correctly with right understanding. Respect is something else, cloth is something else, isn't it? So with right understanding, I am able to make out the need for facility correctly. I am also able to make out the right way to produce it. It's not that to fulfill my need for physical facility, I will deplete the nature, exploit the nature, pollute the nature. If that is the case, then tomorrow I am going to suffer. Pardon? Yes, that is what is happening. And that is a serious concern. seeing that uh, also in uh, happening yeah, yeah. So, so if you exploit the nature ultimately we will suffer then our relations will also suffer yes sir for example it is said that the due to global warming you know, the temperature is rising the sea level and the ocean level is rising if that happens the coastal area is going to drown if that gets drowned then the people have to move to the plateaus to decide and then you can see the commotion the kind of disturbance that will take place in the society Yes, Isn't it? So, it is also a matter of concern, but that can be resolved only through right understanding. So, if you see, our basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity, and to fulfill that basic aspiration, we require all the three. You put in a single sentence what we are trying to convey since morning. Essentially, you want to be happy and prosperous in continuity, and to have this fulfilled, you have to ensure all the three. It can't be just with physical facility because relationships are more important and the two can be understood and fulfilled rightly with right understanding. Unknowingly, we are working only for physical facility, ignorant about the right understanding part, ignorant about the relationship and then what is happening? Even though we are growing more and more in terms of physical facility, there is unhappiness and we are making others also unhappy. If you look at the families, you know, just 40, 30 years back, there used to be joint families. That was a common scenario in the society. Now there are nuclear families. Even the nuclear families are splitting. <laughs> and people are now you know, fearing the marriage also. So the way you know, this is happening. So we are accumulating more and more, indulging more and more, you know, creating more and more kinds of physical facility, but we are suffering on this part. And here also we are suffering. Even though we have accumulated so much, we feel deprived because you don't know how much is enough. And we are depriving the society, the nature also. Exploiting the nature, depriving the nature. This is not what we really want to be. And if our education is taking in this direction, then this is a matter of concern, particularly for us when we are making policies for education. We are developing the courses and curriculum. Can I ask you a basic fundamental question? Yeah. Take a mic. context right now that people are unhappy now that they were being like before. Because I have a problem with them right now. Because I think that, OK. I think that the, you know, the problem, what the problem right is, the problem right here is like, I mean, you, you, are, you are taking this word in three context. People are unhappy now. That is not true. 
That is what my problem is. My problem is, yes, I agree with you. The physical facility have enhanced too much and everything. We may sometimes a compromise on the relationship better, a little bit more because of that. But I don't think that people are drastically unhappy about 50 years ago, 100 years ago that we were. I don't think so. No, I was saying I that know. if you look at the state of family... If, because you put a question mark there, it seems to be that, you know, we focus on... I don't think so. We all... No, we I'm not all claiming that also. I'm only saying if you look at the state of families 50 years back and look at the state of families today, and then we can have you know, a contrast there to see. Was that scenario better or this scenario is better? That is something that we can see. But ultimately, if we are landing up here, this is not our coveted state. Yes. Yeah, that is all. You know? Now, that could be an appraisal. Maybe it can vary from region to region. You know? there, it could be the case that in certain parts of the country, exploitation of one gender, one category of people was more, and now this is coming down. That could be there, yes. So, we can make an appraisal of the current state, but at the same time, this is not our desired state, if this is landing up. If this is happening, then this is not our desired state. Don't you think that as the generation progresses, we bring the best in each and every individual, if that is happening, why there is a question about right of understanding about self relation? Because if you are bringing the best in yourself, either by whatever relationship or by the infrastructure, whatever it is, that is really happiness, right? You don't bring, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the history tells you, uh, industrial revolutions tells you, this thing, everything tells you very well that, you know, we are, we are more happier now than we used to be before. I don't know. I'm just thinking, you know. Uh, See, we can accept I'm that also. Now than but I'm happy 50 saying, years ago. When you try to make the best of yourself, will you work on right understanding or not? Will you work on relationship or not? Or will you only be working for physical facility? If you're trying to only you know, develop more and more sophisticated skills, ignorant about these two, then what will happen? You can just see, so, so many cases are coming up, no? like one child uh, is into video game or mobile game, you know, and he murders the mother and packs into the fridge, and things like that are happening. It means somehow the conditioning is going wrong because we are focusing more and more on physical facility, developing such technologies, but we are not able to give the right feeling to the child. If that is the case, this is certainly not the desirable state. <laughs> In fact, when I went to US first time, I used to get only mails. There is no email. There is nothing there at that time. So I used to be very unhappy if I don't get the email. Right now, you know, I'm, I'm more happy. I can see my kids right away on the FaceTime and everything. Even though they are far apart, it's a, it's a global university, right? Is university with no borders. <laughs> so. I'll keep it open for now, Hannah. We can keep on observing it. But the question is, you see them uh, uh, in a virtually some way. Do you have the physical uh, closeness when you see them online? Definitely, it, it cannot be. So there, there is a kind of you know, um, uh, lots of uh, small amount of at least uh, happiness. We are connected, but still we are disconnected. When you see your son close by, at least sometimes you may try to pat on his back or hug him or kiss him on his forehead. Those are all missing, right? But that's what they say when they say who was wrong. That's what was wrong. No, no, that's right. So, again, fine, fine. Let us keep it open for now, Hannah. So we can see that this is human consciousness. When I am able to ensure all the three with the correct priority. Right understanding, relationship, and physical facility, then only I am living with human consciousness. So I am a human being, but I need to develop myself so that I can live with human consciousness. On the other hand, if this is the case, then we can term it as animal consciousness. Only concerned about physical facility and only working for physical facility, suffering within oneself, suffering in relationships, feeling deprived all the time, exploiting the society and nature, isn't it? And what we essentially want to do, we want to come out of it. So animals living with animal consciousness are in harmony. This is fine. Human being living with human consciousness, again, is in harmony. This is fine. But human being living with animal consciousness, we are in disharmony. And then this, this is the problem. <coughs> this is not fine. What do you mean by animal consciousness? 
this. No. <laughs> being ignorant about right understanding, being ignorant about relationship, working only for physical facility, assuming that this will fetch happiness or prosperity. Destroying the nature and accumulating yeah. the physical facility is the animal. Yeah. So I am saying, yeah, basically this is a fallout. Animal is not doing that. But we human beings, since we have our developed imagination, and we are ignorant about this, then we are destroying much more than an animal could do. I thought it was a survival of the fittest because they have to do that. Killing instinct, all those things are terrible. That's what I thought. No, but here... We go on the deep base. Ji? We go on the deep base. Yes. We go on the want and need. Yeah. Yeah, so our want is for... Yeah. They are always happy. They are always happy. So what I am saying... Animals are always happy. That's what I mean. I am not claiming that also. I am only saying that animal... This physical facility can suffice for animal. But not for us. And since we are missing on these two, that's why we are landing up here. And we want to come out of it. As you said, animals, they don't pray for... Wants. They just want the needs to be able to Once that is fulfilled, they are happy. Yes. So that's yeah. why I mentioned... And they that don't need a physical facility also. Yeah, so that food is also a facility, no? Food is a physical okay. facility. So food is also a facility. Yeah. Food, clothes, shelter, instruments. Shelter. Okay. So but the basic issue is to Anna, ensure this. It is okay for the hostings. That was just a hint, you know, at what we are doing right now. But essentially, we want to be here. Sir, a very simple physical facility, I would say, need of the hour for any human being is transportation. See, you open the IRCTC Mobility website. or transportation? Huh? Pardon, sir? Mobility. Mobility, mobility. Ah. Say, most of us use a train. Uh, for, for Deepavali, now already Deepavali, another two weeks only. <laughs> Just imagine, three months time they are opening the IRCT website. And uh, I don't know how many of us are uh, successful in getting one ticket. So, <laughs> so anyway, the physical facility is need of the hour, that uh, time. And Tatkal. They say Tatkal and also premium Tatkal. <laughs> so, you open the Tatkal, by the time the seat is available, by the time I make the payment, then payment is gone. Uh, but ticket, seat is not available. So, I think okay. you have suffered a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just give a closer look to that. Oh. Uh, I say, what I'm coming to say, physical facility is also more important. Then only I'm making happy with my family or my friends. I'm booking here. See, here I got the ticket. So all are happy there. Okay, if I'm, if I'm getting a ticket there. So, yeah. so let me just add one thing. I'll not discuss at length. Why do we have to book tickets when festivals are coming? Because we're living apart. So the whole, whole, the whole game if we are living together, then there is no need for so much of mobility at all. So we have to look closer into the issues. Same thing, if not misunderstand, now we are sitting here for UHV. Where we missed? Why it is come back again? The physical facilities we say, now we are sitting in the room. We are missing the physical facilities. This is not a physical facility. No, that is also a physical facility. What was ah, that is a revelation. That Pardon? revelation scheme, each and everything, the revelation scheme, we are running for revelation, revelation, revelation changes. We are losing the physical facilities. The natural physical facility. Because it is not an animal conscious. Whether it is a natural animal, natural physical facilities or induced physical facilities. Yeah, so whatever facility you require, we'll try to make out, you know, that what facility I require, why do I require, that all we are going to discuss. And then the we can articulate. The requirement make the changes from the physical facilities. The requirement change as a revolutions come, so that there is a physical facilities. So, sir, ask, want to go to the native by train, booking and all. 
If they are together, yes, there is no need because of the changes. The changes make the needs. Yeah, but why do the changes, like why at all these changes are taking place? That also we have to look into. Just that is a, that is a just an example, <laughs> not that only I have defined it. <laughs> yes. Back to form. So that's why we can see that in the society today, there are two kinds of people which can be seen. One set of people is those who are lacking physical facility and they are unhappy and deprived. And another set is those who are having physical facility but still unhappy and deprived. And the current education at the most can take you from one to two. But the common denominator is that we feel unhappy and deprived if we work only for physical facility. While what we really want to be is this, we want to have physical facility, we are not denying that. But at the same time, our basic aspiration has to be fulfilled. And when this is fulfilled, then only we can rightly articulate how much and what kind of physical facility is required. Isn't it? And the current education is not able to even make everybody you know, reach from one to two because and we can see that if the need for physical facility is not clear, then accumulation and indulgence goes on. And then some are consuming more, some are consuming less. But what we really want to be is this. <coughs> so we have put it as SVDD, Suvidha Vihin Dukhi Daridra. SSDD, Suvidha Sampan Dukhi Daridra. We also call it S square, D square. Right? What is In Hindi it is written as Suvidha Sampan Dukhi Daridra. <laughs> this becomes a kind of formula. In fact, I was conducting a similar session at Kanpur University some years back and at that time the course was not included so I could take only a two hour session with the fourth year students. Then after some time when I was living in Noida and I was going to Kanpur, then one person came to me and saluted and then he told me that he was sitting in that class when I was conducting that session. And from that session, he could make one takeaway that he does not have to belong to this category. That he does not have to belong to this category when one only has the physical facility but no happiness and prosperity. Yeah. So essentially, we want to be this, though we might be landing up at two, you know, because we are focusing more on more on physical facility. So where we are right now, this is something to be looked into, and where do we want to be? So essentially if you see our natural acceptance is this, we are not saying that no physical facility. We want to have physical facility, we can have physical facility. But our basic aspiration is not physical facility. Our basic aspiration is happiness, prosperity, the feeling of prosperity. Isn't it? And there are some data also, we can see. This is a data by UNO that of the 4.2 billion tons of food produced, more than 1 billion tons of food is lost or wasted every year. This is a UN bag report. So you'll see that the global food production is six times the requirement. So there's no dearth of food. The food production is enough, six times the requirement. And one third is wasted across the globe. So the global food wastage is to feed, enough to feed 1300 crores of people. And at that time in 2011, if the population of people you know, on the planet was 650 crores, twice the consumption that is required was being wasted away. Even today it is happening. It is said that the amount of grains that India and China consume together, more than that is fed to the pigs in the United States. And then that is eaten by people, isn't it? And if you feed 13 kgs of grains to a pig, then it develops one kg of flesh. So if you look at it statistically, if you look at the various levels of food wastage, you can make it out correctly. How much food is wasted? Even there are people in this country who are not having enough to eat. They eat for once in a day. You know, that also not nutritious that. And there are people who are wasting so much. So I'm not saying that we can just uh, distribute the physical facility that will serve the purpose. That is not the case. But ultimately, we have to work for right understanding. So you can see that, have you understood right utilization? So no, if this is happening. Is it a question of production? No. Now we are trying to you know, grow more and more. Every year we are saying that we have produced much more than what we used to produce earlier. Every year the tons, the millions of tons or the 
thousands of tons that we are producing is growing. It is certainly a question of distribution. And distribution has to do with relationship. If I am accumulating, indulging and not sharing, it means I lack the feeling of relationship with the other. And this is certainly a question of right understanding. And then boils down to education. Why the education is not able to develop this kind of understanding in the child? I was conducting a session with MBA students in Ghaziabad in UP. And then I asked them that you write your desires. So they wrote the desires. And then one common desire came out. That was that after completing MBA, they want to purchase a car. And a luxurious car. Then I asked them what would be the price of the car. Then with some discussion they settled with 20 lakhs. So they want to purchase a car with you know, costing 20 lakhs. Isn't it? So that is the aspiration that is you know, somehow uh, there in the minds of the students. Then I asked them that are you sure that by sitting in that 20 lakh car you are going to be happy forever? No. Compassion cannot be taught. It has to be experienced and should be imbibed from the young age. Yes. So, so education has to develop the compassion. Correct. But education should be done at the very young age and not only a continuous evolution of seeing people being that pay his parents to be compassionate, his her parents, whatever it is. Okay, because I don't want to be like his only. So that's some important thing, right? Even such a yeah, small so area of education is not going to help you much unless you really continuously put it in action uh, and see other people doing it also. Yeah, so that's how no if you introduce this kind of input in higher education. You are developing the parents of tomorrow, teachers of tomorrow, policy makers of tomorrow, the society of tomorrow. If you try to introduce from the primary education but the parents are not ready to send their children to these schools, the teachers are not ready to teach, then how will you, yeah, yeah. So this kind of transformation is required while we are indulging only for physical facility and this part is missing. From here we have to move to this state. Then only we are developing in the right sense. Then only the development is holistic. So is development just in increasing the physical facility or developing all the three? And is this transformation desirable or not? Let us find out. And are we making effort for it? Do we need to make effort for it? So this essentially is progress and development. Just adding this up is not development. So to say, just our GDP is growing, per capita income is growing, salary is growing, that is not development. Essentially, all these three have to be fulfilled. But, but we need to spend some time with us saying that we are in this state and we need transformation. Yes. I'm not convinced that, but that's important. Pardon? Pardon? We are not. See, the problem is you have to convince, at least me, probably everybody know about it or something like that, that we are in this state and we need to have a transform to that state. If That's you look at not, since I'm morning, not about it. I'm not trying to convince you, but we are able to see that you know, we have to make this transformation. So it's not the point of convincing anybody. No, if you are in this state, you have to transform. If you are in that state, you are happy with that. You are okay. Uh, the transition change requirement. Yeah. No, in fact, if you just let the person refer to one's natural acceptance, the other is able to make out where he or she is right now and what he or she really wants to be. So what we really want to be is this, but we might be here. One is able to make an appraisal of one's current state once the desirable state is clear. Isn't it? And then only we are progressing in true sense of the word in life. So how much I have developed as a human being, how much progress I have made in my life is going to be decided by this kind of matrix, not by this matrix. Well, I'm going to leave the the state, so I don't have to count. We are not going to say, do this. Yes. They are presenting this and it is for you to see where you are. Where you stand and what you do. Yeah, exploring. Lunch break. Okay, lunch break. Yes. So we keep on exploring this and then we have lunch and then we'll assemble again at 1 30 now. 1 30. So <clears throat> we'll watch a short movie of 20 minutes and then we'll discuss it further. So, G?
Leo. <laughs> yeah, that is a movie called uh, Story of Stuff, made by one lady called Annie Leodard. So that shows how consumerism is growing and what are the fallouts because of that. What impact does it have on health, on family? So that is a short movie giving appraisal of the current state of society. Yeah, so if any sharing or any question is there regarding the content that we discussed so far before the lunch. All the stuff we buy. You are, you are, you are really challenging the suppressed economics. <laughs> the suppressed economics proves very really clear that's the way to do it. So create economy. You, 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 if people don't buy free, you don't have economies. That is what it says also, that at some point of time the economists decided that let us make it as a measure of growth or development, how much we consume. And there are nations today who are surviving on the basis of sale of weapons and things like that, isn't it? Okay, Takeaways from that video. What would you make out? I can lift them here also. Marker. Marker. So, what are the takeaways from that video? Reuse, recycle. Okay. So, like reduce, reuse, recycle. <coughs> I hope it is visible from the back side. Yeah. Yes, fine. Pardon? Too much consumption. Too much consumption, hai na? So over consumption. Maybe you can say that reduce and reuse is a self-sustainable way of doing Yeah. Self-sustainable way of Self-sustainable. Yeah. Over consumption is a problem, hai na? Over production. Yeah. So assuming it to be happiness. We are consuming too much, producing too much. What else? Pardon? So you can see that there is a cycle in the nature. Yeah, there is a cycle in the nature, and many times you are not aware of that cycle. Correct, correct. Yeah. Anything, whatever, not only this one. Nowadays we are talking about circular economy, mm -hmm. isn't it? So it has to come back to the same point, which you are not taking care of. Conservation, okay. Conservation. Pardon? In the government. Yeah. Truly, the government. For the people, by the people, and for the people. It has been. What else? Resilience. Resilience. For what? Bringing back to the state. Okay. So need for resilience. I think the biggest lesson I learned in this from this whole movie is with all the facilities, with all everything, she's unhappy and we are unhappy. That's what it is. With all the things we have and everything is evolving, but still we are unhappy. <laughs> Happiness is a myth and mirrors. Never chase it, it will chase you. <laughs> okay. Negative external 
பாடல் ஓகே பட் வாட் குட் பி த டேக் அவே அவுட் ஆஃப் தேட் டேக் அவே மீன்ஸ் சம்திங் தட் வில் லேர்ன் எஸ் அ லெசன் Yeah, so that is what we have mentioned. It also mentions about two kinds of obsolescence, when things become obsolete, planned and perceived, isn't it? Pardon? Consumed need. <laughs> Consume the need rather than the wants. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. So I'll say understand the needs. See that perceived obsolescence is because we do not understand the needs. That shows no, how skinny heels to thick heels and then back to skinny heels is capturing the market time and again, isn't it? Production based on demand, okay. Demand or needs? <laughs> it also says that the happiness index was higher when so much of production and consumption was not there in the 1950s. Now the consumption is going up, production is going up, but the happiness index is coming down. Isn't it? Actually, I, I have a different opinion on that one because the first industrial revolution started in 1915 and uh, we were using coal and everything at that time and steam and, and, and we were happy at that time. Till 1950 we are happy. So you only if it goes beyond certain limit only it really creates problem, right? So if you look at the, the, the linear cycle, if we can manage the cycle correctly with a circle with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a circular one then you can do it since it's going out of bounds right now that's why we are unhappy right now because up to 1950 we are happy right the wait, first thing that happened 1914 right so it's everything is fine the steam then the, then the then the coal then all the industries it all happened right we were all happy at that time wait wait in fact we have to look at it much closely you see, I'm not saying that industries are not required or facilities are not required. But if you look at the world history, imperialism started after the first industrial revolution. And then India and such countries were subjugated to, you know, by the Western forces. So, so many things happened. You have to make a complete appraisal of the state, what happened after the industrial revolution started. This imperialism started, then exploitation, and you know, a huge exploitation of human beings inside Europe, outside Europe, all those things. So you have to look at the complete picture. Yeah. Nice, nice. So but this the was just thing, a hint. But the only thing what's coming to in this one is equity, equality. But that really says something about the communism, you know. Uh, some, uh, that, that's really the, the challenge here, right? So for example, if there is uh, a need for some kind of a metals in some country and Congo, they can do that. What they should do is they should really harvest only a little bit and they should give it at a little higher price if they can do that instead of getting more, instead of extracting more. So it's, it's something, how do you play this game? For example, the petroleum right now, you know, they can harvest more and the, and the oil can come down to 10 to $15 a barrel, but still they won't give it 120 It's how you really utilize your resources correctly so yeah, that you can... and that is possible only when we are able to see at the larger picture that we require all the three. If you keep on consuming oil, consuming gases, consuming coal, consuming minerals, ultimately this is going to happen. The nature is going to get depleted. And in the process to consume more and more or produce more and more, we are exploiting human beings also. So no, no. What I am saying is don't allow to consume. <laughs> See, cut that See, for in the fact. beginning process, you know. For example, if the, if the plastics are cheaper and if only if I can export it. Or for example, if China says, okay, I can make this product, but every, I pay about $20 per person for every hour I pay, then the cost of the price is going to go up, so the consumption will come down. So it's, 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 it's economics it's theory, right? It's very simple. The price goes up, the consumption comes down. Yeah, but we have been That's why the 499 example was given. She gave a 499 example because is the lower the price, the consumption will be higher, you may not even use it. Take it and throw it after a while. Yeah, but how will you make it happen? That is only when you are able to see the relationship with all. 
see if you are not able to see the relationship with people sitting in some other country or the resources outside the country you are not able to make it happen so ultimately you have to work for right understanding so if you look at the complete picture ultimately as a human being i have to work for right understanding relationship followed by physical facility there have been efforts in the history where we try to equalize the physical facility and make the society equitable isn't it or we try to ensure equity but if you are working only for physical facility then these two things are missing and that's how that outcome is not there essentially what we want is not a struggle we want mutual happiness we don't want wars we want mutual happiness mutual prosperity isn't it sir compared to other countries the consumption by us people is very high okay petrol reserve etc okay suppose if the cost is uh, sar told we have to heavily tax for the more consumed people if the petroleum product we will have a price like that for particular amount this is the price if the amount exceeds then the price is increased means maybe the consumption will be slightly decreased for example tamil nadu government uh, for electricity consumption they have some slab up to 100 minutes there is no price then the consumption is more they will increase the price so See, whatever you do like that if you are working only in the domain of physical facility it will not work whatever you do but if it is only to do with the physical facility not because ultimately the problems are being created by human beings you have to develop their understanding you have to develop the feeling of relationship among human beings and at a personal level i have to develop for myself i am not able to ensure mutual happiness in my relationships if i miss out the relationship part if i miss out the understanding part isn't it many countries utilizing other countries resources and they save mm -hmm. their resources okay that is also <laughs> happening in the world so we have actually, to see ultimately what one, is development what is holistic one more inference actually from the movie is with all the gdp growth and everything is happening in northern european countries like netherlands belgium sweden switzerland and everything they are still happy but they don't consume the way the americans consume but the, but the, but the, but the uh the study has been taken by the movie is yes, by the us people only for happiness if you go back and take the happiness of the northern european countries it will be different so, so, so let, let, let me come back to the point so the reason is i think if you go back to a german worker uh, he may still he may be about 50 years old he may be still driving a, a volkswagen bug which is he bought it about 20 30 years ago whereas if you go to us the person will buy a car every 2 years or every 3 years so it's a consumption based economy so the question is now again you have to come back to the first point right of interest if, if you understand yourself very clearly this is what you want to do you won't be really swayed away by by commercials or these things you know people can make fun of you but it doesn't matter what you are it's what what do you feel good about it right you know that's and if important. you are develop able to develop the understanding in the other then why will people mock at you also so we are able to ensure mutual happiness in our relationships so the net outcome is that ultimately i have to ensure human consciousness yes hello hello uh, just an observation sir so that uh, i to accept that uh, movie um, the final thing right fine but uh, this may not be suitable for a, a highly populated country like us so ultimately we are uh, discussing about the trade off between the uh, physical facility and the happiness no right? uh, uh, physical facility and the relationship no no i am not talking about the trade off not at all i am saying you can observe at a personal level for you is this the correct priority or not yes yeah that's all so we are not saying that i have to forsake one for the other i am saying all the three can be fulfilled together if you put right understanding at the first priority yeah. there is no issue of trade off at all no but the point is if the what the movie uh, depicts here is that uh see country like in india if we restrict the consumption okay obviously it led a chain effect of less production right okay and if it is a less production i will employ only less a number of labors so only less number of population will have the wage income and all those things right okay so with the less production but the high amount of population 
there will be a high demand for the goods and services. So the price of this product will go up. So already I am an unemployed person, okay, because only less number of people are being employed. Already I am an unemployed person. The price of a particular product is going up. So I could, I am not, most of the people could not afford to buy the goods and services available in the country. So that will lead to more hunger and deprivation. Wait, wait, ah. I can explain that. See, that whole cycle has been analyzed multiple times and, I, and it has been found that this is not the case. I will give you an ex a simple example. Let's say we talk about GDP nowadays. You know? yeah. Now if there is a family which has a plot of land, it cultivates food for itself and you know, grows food for itself and it's happily with the family together, then the GDP of the country is not growing. But if you are not able to produce by yourself and you have to go and purchase from the market, the GDP goes up. right? And if in the family it is decided that you will not cook by yourself, you have to go and eat in a hotel, then the GDP will again go up. You go to the hotel, eat there and spoil your stomach. You go to a doctor, GDP again <coughs> goes yeah, up. But, but don't you think that... Don't, no, one second. No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, I agree. But the, at the same time, don't you think that uh, the jobs are being created in that activity? Yeah, in fact, it is commonly assumed that if you consume more, there will be more jobs, more employment, more production. But at the same time, if you lack physical uh, relationship, if you lack right understanding, then what you do essentially to produce more or to consume more, you exploit human beings. You pay less, take work more, consume more, provide less. And then that creates a struggle in the society. And that ultimately leads to mutual unhappiness, mutual deprivation. Because there is a lack of feeling of relationship. Otherwise, we can produce together, we can consume together, we can share together. That feeling is not there because of lack of relationship. Uh, that's a hypothetical holiness uh, uh, situation. But already we have crossed the limit where the wrong has been already committed at creating a lot of inequality. Right? In terms of income or in terms of whatever we, we can name it. So now we have to find out the solution for that one. So when you want to have a solution to make the inequality into a situation where almost everybody is getting equal, then you have to give them the opportunity to work. If yeah. you want to give the opportunity to work, I need investment. I have wait, wait, to get... No, 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 no. Before that, look into this. I am able to give the opportunity to work for the other when I have the feeling of relationship. Otherwise, why will I do that? Then I will employ a machine which can work for 10 more people, right? Make production happen out of that, consume myself, leave aside the human race. <laughs> okay. I, I, it is actually, so what we can do, no, the idea which you are bringing it, I don't want to argue much, please. I accept all the facts what has been, but the point is that the Gandhian economy the ideology, what you are suggesting, the principles no, of no, no. Gandhian economy says that the same village you produce, you consume, and you be happy. No, I am not that, saying that. That's that if, the, if suppose if everywhere if that happens, then there won't be any problem. The demand will be equal to supply, equilibrium price will be maintained. But the point is that already uh, over the past, even after uh, the independence also, there is a, a significant amount of inequality in terms of income. Even at that time also, we had rich segment and the poor segment. So the uh, governments, after governments, and the... Uh, I got the know, idea. Uh, Let me respond. Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, what you are trying to delve into is merely the physical facility. Inequality here, equality here, all the solutions we are trying to look for here, which is not the case. I am trying to bring your attention to this part and this part. If you try to equalize the society only by working for physical facility, this way or that way, it will not help. Ultimately, you have to have the feeling of relationship. You have to have the right understanding of the need for physical facility. You have to have the right understanding of feelings in relationships, which are mutually fulfilling. Uh, no, I, I think, you don't know. I, I think it's fine. No, it's yeah. <laughs> so, I responded, it. yeah. So this is progress, when we are able to ensure all the three. Whatever we try to do only in the domain of physical facility will not suffice, neither for me at a personal level, nor for my family, nor for the society around. Because this is human consciousness, and this is my need. I need all the three. I don't need only the physical facility. Is that true? Then only we are developing holistically. Otherwise it is fragmented, segmented, 
because we are working only for this part, leaving aside this and this part. So the role of education is to ensure this transformation. So the role of education sanskar is to enable this transformation by ensuring the development of the competence to live with human consciousness and definite human conduct. And for this it has to ensure all the three, right understanding in every child, the capacity to live in relationship with every other human being, and the capacity to identify the need for physical facility and the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required, leading to the feeling of prosperity. So this would be the vision of education. If you have to make a vision statement for the institution, it has to be on this line. We can't leave aside one, two, and even this third part, first part, okay, and just talk about the skills and practice for production. Forget about sustainability. This is what we are doing, generally. So if you do not have the right vision in education, then how are you able to impart the right kind of education? So if you look at the current state, the program to ensure right understanding in every child, it is missing. We have put it out of syllabus. The capacity to live in relationship with other human beings, we have put it out of syllabus. In fact, contrary to that, we are pushing more and more students for more and more cutthroat competition and struggle and all those things. We are giving some you know, uh, negative input that's such. No, no, I'm not saying that. No, no. See, exams can have two purposes. See. No, 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 put ranking. There are some, yeah. some, some effort has been done in the Yale University in the 1970s that they will give for one program, they can only pass up. They don't give a clean. They don't want to get a big difference between the A grade or B grade. I'm not also saying that yeah. this has to be done. I'm just saying currently this is missing, this is missing. And even the need for identification of physical facilities is also missing, that the students are able to identify their needs correctly. The willingness to produce by way of labor is also missing. You can see the fallacy is there. You know? The right utilization is also largely missing. The students are falling into that trap of overconsumption. And the core feeling that is generated is to accumulate more and more, to consume more and more, rather than to produce what is required and utilize it rightly. Take a mic. Sir, the second part, uh, we teach uh, the students uh, moral stories, uh, social science. And uh, at the school level, I'm saying, but uh, how uh, directly can we say, uh, present state, the capacity to, uh, we have mentioned relationship with the other human beings is missing. Mm -hmm. I, I feel uh, <laughs> we already inculcate all these things to our uh, children. Yeah, so we have okay. been intending to do it, let me say. We want to do it. But if you just provide some moral stories, lessons, dictums, sermons, that will not develop the feeling of relationship. Ultimately, you have to help the child explore. We have been listening to so many moral stories. And maybe many times these moral stories are also contradictory. The, giving the, the lessons which may not be conducive to a happy and healthy environment. Yes. The real challenge is to see that how does, when we teach something, that it leads value to them. See, the problem is they don't realize the value of having re good relationship, behavior, and everything. We don't. They think, they think the value is being competi com competitive, yeah, so for that get A grade, to... get into these things. Okay, that's what, that's what they think is important, right? They don't see a value in the other ones. So for that's that, we have to allow the children to ask questions. Now, in a family, you just see. If a guest comes to your house, the child will ask, who is he? You respond, Mr. X and Y. You know? From where he I come? Delhi. Where is Delhi? Now gradually your engine starts heating up. You know? <laughs> and then you start shouting. You, know? you don't have any other thing to do. You, know? you keep on disturbing me. And then the child withdraws in your relationship. Because we are not able to you know, respond to the queries, the inquisitiveness in the child. The child wants to know oneself, wants to know the things around oneself, wants to understand the whole existence. But we don't have understanding in ourselves. So what we do? We curb their questions. Google, Google. <laughs> <laughs> no, Google can only provide you information. That exploration is still remains due, remains due. So that kind of you know, explorational thing has to come into education, which is not there. That's why it is missing. 
and you see the students are not able to identify the need for physical facility when we ask how many of you want to become millionaire every child says yes so they are not able to identify this need and this has become a common notion that even after getting educated if I have to make my hands dirty then somewhat my education has been less if I can make others make their hand dirty for me I am educated isn't it in fact we are uh, conducting one such session with the final year students at triple IIT Hyderabad and then the director asked them it was placement time so the director asked them that what kind of placement do you want can you list your aspirations then many students were saying many other things one student stood up and said I need three things very categorically first job satisfaction out of my job I want job satisfaction second thing maximum pay and third thing if possible no work <laughs> so this is the kind of mindset that is growing today now whose job it is see again it becomes a kind of cycle so I responded to that we can take it to school level in fact we are taking it to school level right and it is everybody's responsibility because everybody wants to be happy isn't it now to take it to the school level you have to work at a much broader scale lakhs of teachers are there and crores of students are there so for that we have to develop the teachers of tomorrow the parents who are going to send their children to the schools the policy makers who are going to set up these policies and implement them so we have started with higher education and we means we all of us okay. and, isn't it there are two things there are two things in fact at the elementary stage to a, to a particular age their brain has also not developed maybe up to the age of eight or nine and after that they are dependent too much of them on their parents okay so they are not able to explore freely by themselves but when they come to higher education they are living in a hostel they are leading a life of on their own then they are in a much better state to explore this is what we have found but yes we can start even earlier in MP we have introduced this in class 9 and we are trying to see what kind of result is visible but we can experiment with it yes so the problems are only an indication of the lack of effort for holistic development so most of the problems we see around us are really only the symptoms of human beings not living with human consciousness so I'll say that the problems which are surfacing they are only the tip of the iceberg because the understanding part is missing isn't it that feeling part is missing so there is an effort required here and that's how and as we are able to conclude also we need an education which can be termed as humane right from childhood even before coming to school the parents who are inculcating you know, at home so they also need to have the right understanding and so that we are able to enable consciousness in children so that they are able to contemplate on human values and they are able to develop adults who can live with human conduct human character and they can be a pillar of human society so this kind of process has to be enabled what is human consciousness human values I Oh, this is something that I mentioned here. This is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So then it will result in a human tradition. So in fact, we are going to explore these one by one now. So when we are able to develop the right understanding, that essentially means that we have to understand harmony at every level. So at an individual level, what do I aspire? You know? How do you connect the previous slide? No, no, no. <laughs> this. Yeah, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Yes. Yeah, a little bit of jump is there. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you are able to relate so well. Yes. In fact, I'll come to that. Right understanding means understanding of harmony. Maybe I'll show it here first. We will put that slide later. <laughs> yes, that was a good observation. 
So, if you look at the human consciousness, essentially what is right understanding? So, this is something that we'll explore. Understanding each and everything that matters to me. I am a human being, I want to understand myself. I live in a family, I want to understand my family. I live in a society, I need to understand what society means. Can we have a common goal living in a society? And we are there in a nature, isn't it? Where not only human beings are there, so many other things are there. I need to understand them also. What is harmony? Harmony, what is the word? Why do you use harmony? It's peacefulness, what is it actually? Understanding what we are, understanding peacefulness. I don't know what is the word harmony is being used over there. So find out for yourself. Harmony in family, what does that mean? Yes. So means that when I am living in a family, is there mutual happiness or not? Okay. That is harmony. Mutual happiness. Mutual happiness. When I am uh, within myself and uh, looking into my thoughts, is there harmony in my thoughts or contradiction in my thoughts? So this I can make out, isn't it? So free of contradiction, free of. Everything is in harmony in a particular sequential order. You get good music. It's not in harmony, you get bad. Seven. Not not Yeah. But once that, that's what he meant. Uh, I mean, uh, if I'm wrong. In fact, we'll explain it. But yes, we can also keep it on the side. We need to understand the human being, isn't it? Right understanding would mean that I need to understand the human being. I need to understand. In self, in yeah. In self. Yeah. In self, yes. So am I free of contradictions within or am I carrying contradictions in me? If I'm having contradictions in me, I'm in disharmony. But if I'm free of contradictions, conflicts, you know, doubts, dilemmas, then I'm in harmony. Similarly, in my family, and if the behavior is mutually fulfilling. Sir, uh, uh, misunderstanding, suppose uh, your views may be different. See, I can have a view on a problem. The other person, my colleague came and uh, have another view. So that doesn't mean uh, we are having a misunderstanding. So uh, that is, uh, I used to say, the views, your views is not uh, matching with my views. That's all. But because of these views are not matching, I cannot say I am having a misunderstanding with my colleague. So yeah, so like on a particular subject, like if you even if you see in this hall, is there harmony or not? Yes, yes sir. Yes. But the views might be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are having our views, we are sharing our views, we are exploring our views together. Agree, <laughs> So, so because this is very important, sir, in a, in a, in a work environment, when we work with a lot of colleagues, a lot of views will be there, but we have to go get together along with everyone. But if you are going to focus on the views, so he is with my views, so I like him. And he is not, he is against my views, so I don't like him. So if you are going to have that type of attitude, uh, that is definitely going to be uh, very. Uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, sir. Boss, I can also. No, no, I can also differ from my boss. Still, I can have a good relationship with my boss. There's a boss that will be different. <laughs> See, all of you are bosses, isn't it? For somebody. <laughs> but there's a boss for us too. <laughs> So I need to understand everything that matters to me, isn't it? When I'm able to understand it rightly, with right understanding, then I'm able to live accordingly. So the word sanskar that we have been using, it essentially means living part. Education is the understanding part, sanskar is the living part. So with my you know, colleagues, with my family members, with my friends, with people in the market, I'm able to behave in a way so that it ensures mutual happiness. Isn't it? Similarly, with the rest of nature, with air, water, soil, you know, machines, minerals, all that, I am able to interact in a way so that my needs are fulfilled and that also gets enriched. There's a thirkural for this one very clearly. Pardon? There's a thirkural for this one very clearly. Karka kasakasa, karpa vay karta bin nirka adarita kada, living understand. <laughs> so 
Gabriel dijo, ok, fine, ok. Ok, uh, that is a circle, it's a third world war road, this uh, two liner, or one, one and a three quarter liners. Uh, okay, couple of, you can call it couple of, exactly. That one really says, Karka Kasadara. Karpa Vai, Katrabin Nirka Adar Kuttaka. Whatever you, should, you need to know, you need to understand, learn it, but learn it without any ambiguity in it. Then, after learning it, stand by that and live by that. That's what it says. Nice, nice. Someone was mentioning in the inaugural no, that the person with right understanding will know the way, go the way, and show the way, isn't it? <laughs> so, so this is what we need to enable in the students, isn't it? Now, if you expand it, then you can see that right understanding in the self essentially means understanding my living at every level. For that, I am able to ensure justice in the relationship. Justice with my spouse, with my child, with my student, with my boss, with my colleague, with my neighbor. And the mark of justice is mutual happiness. So, it so happens that through self-exploration, I am able to develop understanding in me and then my competence to live with justice in my relationship also develops. What so, does justice Justice basically means ensuring mutual happiness. What does justice really mean? Yeah, uh, in fact, when we talk about relationship, we'll talk about justice also. But in brief, I can say that justice means ensuring mutual happiness. Injustice starts when there is lack of mutual happiness. So, for example, somebody hurts somebody. So, mutual happiness has not resulted. Injustice has started. After a certain point, it may take the shape of some fight, quarrel or war. But injustice starts the very moment I have some wrong feeling for the other. I do not have the right feeling which is acceptable to me naturally. So, now competence to live with justice starts from family and goes to the world family. So, you'll see that the more competence I develop in me for relationship, I'm able to relate to everyone else. So, if I'm having that competence of right feeling in me, so not only that I live with right feeling in my family, I also come to the college, interact with the students in a similar manner. If I'm standing in a queue on a railway station, I'm able to see my relation with everyone standing in front of me and standing behind me. Isn't it? So, that competence grows in me gradually. Similarly, when I'm able to participate in the larger order with this understanding, then I am able to ensure orderliness in the family and also able to participate in the world family order. But we'll come to that. So essentially we want this, this mutual happiness extends to undivided society and this mutual prosperity extends to you know, universal human order. So we have been saying that this whole earth is a single family, but how to make it happen, how to accomplish, you know, for that we have to develop the right understanding in oneself. The moment I am clear, I become a part of this, I am become a foundation of this. See, if the other person is sulking, if the other person is not getting into dialogue with me, it means there is no happiness in mutual relation. <laughs> so we can get into dialogue. Okay. See, in any relationship, I can always talk to the other. In fact, in a department also, if there is some unhappiness, sit together, talk together, and discuss the issue, and always try to refer to one's natural acceptance. If that is the case, then we are able to resolve. But if we try to stick to our opinion without looking into our natural acceptance, the issue is not going to be resolved. See, ideal means I have not been able to explore that much. Otherwise, Anna, this is what is natural. Ultimately... You do this to your wife or kids and everything because you don't have a choice. <laughs> you live with them. You live with them for a reason. You want to understand them more and more so that you make it really easy to... But if you work in the working as working game for five years, six years, okay, fine. If it hurts me, it goes away. It doesn't matter. I look for another job and move on. See, here also we can see that even if the person is working in my organization or some other organization, the relationship is there. I can but see I very see much. You. I don't see you. I don't deal in dealing with Yeah, I'm not fulfilling it. I'm not fulfilling it in that manner, but ultimately relationship is there. Correct. You might have come across so many people in your life with whom you are not interacting, but you the relationship is there. So relationship is always there. It's only that we are not paying attention to it. Oh, 
case, I've got a relationship with the, the whole wide world. Why not? And the nature too, everything. Yes. Zillion relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that is the meaning of undivided society. I can see my relationship with one and all. So the key takeaway if you see what we talked about right now. So our basic aspiration is the continuity of happiness and prosperity. This is a very basic takeaway. In fact, I was talking to one student in the third year whom I had taught in the second year, the course on human values. And I asked him that what was your takeaway? What do you remember right now out of that course? He said that one thing I can never forget that basically I want to be happy. In my life, I will always evaluate whether I'm getting happier or not. Isn't it? So, whatever job I cho choose, whatever you know, uh, place of residence I choose, ultimately I have to see whether I am getting happier or not. Then only I am progressing in life. In the mad race many times, no, we forget about this. So, this is one basic key takeaway and I will we'll keep on referring to this. Then for fulfillment of basic aspiration, three things are required. Right understanding in the self, relationship with human being and physical facility with the rest of nature then only I am living with human consciousness. So holistic development is transformation to human consciousness at the level of individual development. It could be a cyst in the society, it could be a cyst in the family, isn't it? So essentially, we have to look at development in the holistic sense. So the role of education sanskar is to enable us to develop the competence to fulfill our basic aspiration and to contribute to holistic development. In other words, the role of education sanskar is personal transformation by way of ensuring this development of competence to live with human consciousness and human conduct. Is that fine? Any questions so far? Oh. Too many questions to ask for more questions. Ji? <laughs> so, if you look at the three-day workshop, we are going to now discuss harmony at every level. We are going to be proposals about you know, harmony at every level. And the process would be the same, self-exploration. Our job from this side is only to put forward the right proposal to you, or the proposal, and, and then we have to explore together. And we say that we are co-explorers. You are also exploring, I am also exploring in the process. And in fact, in every relationship, we can be co-explorers. In a family, we can be co-explorers, okay? The reality is there, the existence is there. I am also exploring, you also explore. I will not stick to my opinion, you don't stick to your opinion. We are, let us look into the truth, what is it? Isn't it? Then we can come to the right conclusion. So the desired achievement through this process is that individual transformation takes place when you are able to develop the right understanding so that we are able to live with happiness and prosperity and then gradually it takes the shape of societal transformation. Isn't it? And midway is the team development, the transformation in the team. So here we have a team, team of faculty, team of you know, deans and directors. So, to enable the societal transformation, we have to enable this transformation in the team. If all the individuals in society goes to understanding and uh, transformation, do you think that automatically the societal transformation happens? Yeah, so but the process of transformation is not automatic. You see, it does take time for each one of us. So it does take time for each one of us to develop oneself, to transform oneself. You know? It is taking time for, of course taking time, isn't it? So it's not the case that all the individuals at once will get transformed, but yes, we are into that process. And when all the individuals are through that process, through right education, the society is also transforming. Yes, yeah. So, pardon? Yeah, homework is going to be shared. Uh, it is in hard copy or uh, hard copy, yeah. <laughs> no, no, maybe we can do it later. Yeah. So in the homework, you will get to write about all these things, like your experience. Yeah. So this is the whole process. So it is a proposal being put forward to you. You have to verify on your own right and essentially you have to look into 